the Gran Turismo World Series Nations Cup. Hello, let's hear it. Yes, we're coming to you live from Amsterdam. So excited to have you guys in the audience. Let's hear it for you guys. Come on. It's really cool. So yesterday we had an incredible Manufacturers Cup. It was unbelievable from start to finish. If you missed it, I do recommend going back and checking out a little bit later, but not right now, because today is the Nations Cup. And we decided to, you know, spice it up a little bit this year, as it's no longer a singular driver racing for their nation. It is the top three drivers from each nation, hoping to bring home, well, to bring home the trophy and be crowned the Nation Cup champion. As I said, it's a little bit different this time, so I think we should probably take a quick look at how the comp format is going to go down. So instead of it being a singular driver hoping to be crowned champion, we've got the top three drivers from each country working together as a team to be the Nations Cup showdown winner. Now, earlier today, we had a qualifying time trial, the results of which set the order they get to pick their car for the qualifying race that's about to happen. Now, the qualifying race is gonna have the number one ranked driver from each country competing in a full 10 lap sprint. And of course, the results of which are gonna determine the grid position for that huge grand final. In this grand final, all three drivers must race as a team and it's a 30 lap race to the finish to be crowned the grand final Nations Cup showdown winner. Let's give it Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Julia. Huge welcome to everybody here in Amsterdam for the World Series showdown for the 2023 Gran Turismo Nations Cup. My name's Tom Brooks. Alongside me, Jimmy Broadbent here to guide you through the action today. Jimmy, great to have an audience here, and they're so lively as yeah, well. Yeah, I know. It's uh, Since 2020 was the last time we had an audience, so it's quite surreal to have them here again in person. Awesome to have that energy here, here at Amsterdam. And I think it's only going to add to the experience here in the Nations Cup. Absolutely. Well, let's get straight into it, show and have a look at the general qualifying session that took place earlier on today uh, for the Nations Cup. So we're in the Ferrari Vision Gran Turismo around the Grand Valley circuit here. This was Lucas Benelli who put in a stonker. Didn't go quite so well though for the USA. On their flying lap they went off the circuit straight to the scene of the accident and that ultimately cost them a position on the grid that was anything meaningful. Unfortunately Japan came through there with an absolute worldie of a lap time to put themselves into provisional pole position at this stage as well. Yeah great that there by Kobayashi of course just putting down that authority nice and quickly. Belgium as well came kind of from nowhere here. Quinton Hall coming across the start finish line to put it P2 and you can see what it meant to him. <laughs> Nearly lost his lunch though, I think, actually, that lap. And uh, Team Italy as well looking incredibly quickly. Nearly enough to challenge Japan, but not quite close enough. And yeah, look at the gap here. I say that, sorry, I lied. He went a bit quicker. So Japan, they're down a second, but it was France who come across the start finish line right at the end of the session there just to pip Italy at the last second there. And the Gallo sort of expected that. But that's Kylian Dumont, one of the quickest drivers here uh, in the Gran Turismo World Series. Yeah, absolutely. And what this meant was basically they determined who chose their car for in what order, essentially, for the uh, qualifying race, which we've got coming up later on. So if you finish first, you get the first pick and down to 12th, etc. So this is how it all sort of worked out for the teams and drivers. And you can see the selections there that were made on screen. It's going to be really interesting to see how this works out, because as you can tell, it's not the normal sort of Group 3, Group 4 machinery that we're using. We're actually in production cars for this qualifying race. And it's hugely important because that determines who's going to line up where on the grid for the grand final. I think uh, Brazil there picked the best car, in my, uh, my opinion. <laughs> Super, 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 baby, but yeah, awesome to see all these different cars here. Here is the starting grid for the race coming up. Of course, Kylian Dumont on pole position for Team France. Italy with Valero Gallo second and Kobayashi in third with Team Japan. Yeah, absolutely right. You can see the drivers there uh, relatively close to one another, aside from USA, of course, who we saw going off on their flying lap. Now, anyway, before we get racing action underway, there's a few campaigns that are live in Gran Turismo 7 at the moment. So take a look at this and see what you can get yourself involved with. If you've opened up GT7 in the past couple of days, you'll see it's been updated for the GT World Series showdown in Amsterdam. To celebrate the release of the Gran Turismo movie this month, the Nissan GTR Nismo GT3 2018 is available as a gift until September 28th. Just click the special panel on the upper right of the world map screen to redeem in the same livery as the car in the movie. Better, if mate. you think you can predict who will be our 2023 <laughs> showdown champions, click on the bonus campaign for your chance to win some serious credits. You can vote right up until the start of the grand final race of each event, so good luck. 
And if you click the viewers campaign panel to watch this weekend's stream, you'll receive an engine swap ticket for watching the Manufacturers' Cup and early access to the amazing Toyota Japanese Ambulance if you watch the Nations' Cup. And while you're in GT7, do keep practicing and, well, who knows, it could be you competing here next year. Absolutely brimming with campaigns we are, yes. Now, I just want to take a quick moment before we kick off to remember that you guys need to be voting for your Michelin driver of the day. Now, it's going to be in the same format as yesterday, which means that, you know, you have to, three are going to basically be nominated and then you're going to vote. And then in the press conference, that's when it's decided. I don't know if you missed it, but it was Jose Serrano. Well deserved Jose Serrano from yesterday after driving an awful lot, let's be honest. Now, speaking about Michelin, <laughs> They're doing a particular time trial in October where you could win a trip, to, well, VIP trip, I should say, to come to the World Finals in Barcelona, plus a whole bunch of other stuff too. So keep an eye out on the Gran Turismo socials and online for that because it's going to be amazing. And come and join us, basically, in Barcelona. How cool. We want to see you there. I think I should stop talking. We should probably kick off and get this qualifying race done. What do you think, guys? Let's do it. They're a live, well, they're a lively bunch here, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, they're having a great time, which is uh, the best thing. Yeah, qualifying race coming up very, very shortly. Very much looking forward to this one, Tom. Yeah, exactly. It's going to determine the grid positions for the grand final. So essentially what we've got ahead of us is a 10 lap sprint race. Mm. This is going to be hugely exciting because we know where the drivers are lining up on the grid. And here we go then, ready to get into the qualifying race, which will determine the grid order for the grand final here coming up later on tonight. So, Nations Cup action about to begin. It is the Grand Valley Highway 1 circuit. France will start on pole position with Kylian Drumont at the helm. Italy with Giorgio, with uh, Valerio Gallo behind the wheel alongside him on the front row. Rikuta Kobayashi for Japan, hedge row two. Spain with Jose Serrano, Michelin driver of the day yesterday. Belgium's Quintenia Hall lines up. P5 for BMW. Then you've got Brazil with Adriano Carazza in the Toyota Super ahead of the Kiwis. New Zealand, Matt McEwen in the, the uh, Ferrari F40. Netherlands, Kai de Brun lines up P8 ahead of the Malaysian. Danny Wigliswaran ahead of P10. Canada, Ethan Lim in the Nissan Z performance car. Chile have chosen the Chevrolet Corvette with Harold Bolson at the wheel. And the USA, Kevin Pounder in the Lamborghini Diablo. So, Though they've got three drivers, only one of them will partake in this qualifying race. They've had to determine which of those will be. That we just ran you through that. Ten laps of action here for this qualifying race, Jimmy. A rolling start at Grand Valley. This is going to be really interesting. I think any grid with a Toyota Supra, a Ferrari F40, and a Lamborghini Diablo in it is a good grid. Uh, very much looking forward to seeing how these guys go racing together. Rolling start here, of course, as Tom said. So they'll be at up to pace by the time they get down to T1. Good overtaking spot down there. So straight line speed. Uh, it's going to be what you want down there uh, in, the, in the machine you're in. So looking forward to seeing if we see any big lunges down towards the first couple of corners. Yeah, well, there's a great possibility of that. A lot of medium speed corners uh, around this circuit and does lend itself to overtaking with some lovely camber on some of them as the drivers get themselves prepared and ready to go. That's Adriano Carazza, the Brazilian driver here. It's Quinten Yahal for Belgium. They line up a little bit further down the order than I'm sure they would like to be on the grid. But this is going to be super exciting. Qualifying race for the Nations Cup in the world. World Series showdown, it's lights out and we go racing then, so France lead the field across the timing line, followed by Italy, Japan, Spain, Belgium in towards turn one, a nice sweeping left-hander, the first real break is this right-hander though, a long hairpin through there, all the cars relatively spread out so far, so no attack moves being made, but I'm sure as the lap progresses onwards, that's when we'll see others closing up onto the back, and then we'll see the moves starting to come. Yeah, of course, this race is important for the starting grid later on thinking of it like a sort of sprint race similar to the F1, but uh, France leading right now. It's the second. Chile uh, already down to P12 there. So USA starting their climb up the order from last on the grid at the moment. Action behind though, as uh, that's uh, Spain and I think that's a Super Brazil side by side. Belgium there looking to try and take a position away from Team Brazil. Uh, Super and BMW. There is the Team Belgium car behind them. Uh, very closely is the F40 of New Zealand. And Netherlands there right on the back now on the Ferrari. Is there a place to get by here? No, not at 
the moment, but uh, very, very close right now is Team Netherlands. Yeah, certainly piling the pressure on is Kai De Bruyne here. We saw him at the uh, Olympic Esports Series back in uh, Singapore just a few months ago. You can see some pressure there being put onto the back of Belgium by New Zealand. Brazil kind of holding up a little bit of a train. There's a fair bit of daylight, actually, that's began to emerge between Spain and Brazil in fourth and fifth place there, respectively. New Zealand with all sorts of pressure on the back of them with that Ferrari F40. Down this back straight over the viaduct here. Netherlands pulling out of the slipstream here on New Zealand, trying to elevate themselves up into seventh place, and they do so. Brazil, meanwhile, Adriano Carazza has picked up a penalty of one second for colliding with another car, especially on the opening lap. That's going to be really, really detrimental to their race because the field is so bunched up. Yeah, penalty is going to immediately benefit Team Belgium, Team Netherlands, and probably Team New Zealand as well. So disaster there uh, for Team Brazil in that Supra. But as you say, Tom, they're a bit of a cork in the bottle at the moment. They're, they're doing a good job of defending, but it's got have no pace at this point of the race. It's allowing Spain to get away, Japan in front as well. Japan very close, actually, to the back of Team Italy as well for P2. Looking at the timing right now, Japan up into second place past Team Italy. So now they're going after France in front. Meanwhile, uh, it's uh, Belgium and Brazil still going side by side. Italy there to having to defend from Team Spain, only just managing to do it as Netherlands move up into sixth position. So good progress on the opening lap from Team Netherlands, elevating themselves up from eighth into sixth position then on board we ride here with Spain. It's uh, Jose Serrano, the Michelin driver of the day from yesterday, who is get, got box side seats for this one. He's trying to get himself past Valerio Gallo in the Honda NSX for Team Italy, but no room at the inn through this hairpin for the time being. France with a six tenth of a second advantage out in front. Brazil and the Netherlands under investigation for a collision on the opening lap. But this is brilliant. No tail action here in these production cars. And one thing to mention is I think Japan just grazed the wall there on the outside is the fact that these uh, production cars don't have anywhere near the same levels of downforce that we're used to seeing in the Group 3 machines. So they're going to be sliding a lot more over the course of this uh, Grand Valley Highway 1 circuit. Yeah, second place there of that, that penalty as well, Tom. I'm not sure you pointed that out or not, but that's going to, of course, be uh, massive for Team Japan. It's going to allow Italy up into second place. It will, will probably promote Spain as well up into third. Netherlands there, giving a one-second penalty for colliding with another car. Japan there, of course, slow due to their penalty. Italy will now go up into second. Can Spain get first? Well, they can. So Spain up into the uh, podium position right now. Uh, all this is doing, of course, is allowing France a little bit of breathing room. All these, uh, the time the guys are squabbling, they're fighting, trying to get places, they're losing time to Team France. Yeah, there's the penalty for the Netherlands to the dismay of the home crowd here in Amsterdam. Kai de Bruyn deemed to be at fault for the collision between themselves and Adriano Carazza for Team Brazil. Brazil, meanwhile, have been mired uh, all the way down into 10th place. They started 6th, they dropped some 4 positions but Netherlands still, despite that penalty, right on the back of Belgium. It'll all be in vain because they'll have to serve the penalty next time around. But in the meantime, they're in the slipstream. They pull alongside Belgium as we come along the start-finish straight to begin the next lap. And they go through on the BMW and up into the top five for the first time in this race. Yeah, save so the penalty. It's been a good race so far for Team Netherlands. Again, a few places. They do have the pace at the moment to go forward, but that penalty is really going to put a damper on that. That's going to put them back behind Belgium. And they have to make that move all over again. All that does is slow you down. But fortunately a big gap behind that. Meanwhile, the fight for second place, it's really hotting up at the moment. Uh, Spain, Japan, Italy are pretty much uh, joined at the hip as they go down towards the uh, the hairpin, the heavy braking zone down at the bottom here, just sort of clap, uh, catching a glimpse of that there in the foreground. But uh, Team Netherlands having to serve this penalty very soon. It's all kicking off a bit further down. New Zealand have been in the wars. They uh, were battling with the likes of Malaysia, the USA, Brazil and Chile, and they've been mired right down into 12th position. So clearly some incident has happened there. Malaysia and Brazil are under investigation as a result of what has gone on, but they are split by the smallest of margins further back and right up the sharp end here in this battle for second place. We ride on board now with the driver of Jose Serrano, who sits in second. He has got the Japan team with Rikuso Kobayashi and then the Italian of Valerio Gallo hot on his heels at the moment, and he's soaking up this pressure absolutely beautifully. And this, of course, as we've mentioned a few times now already, is crucial because it determines the starting order for the grand final coming up here later on as well. That's a penalty there for Team Netherlands. They drop back behind Team Belgium, but uh, something to take away there for Kai is that he was quick and he was pulling away. So here is a replay of why that penalty was handed out. Yeah, punted the Supra there. Uh, just got a little bit late on the brakes. Of course, not intentional, but contact is contact, and uh, we don't allow that here. That's frustrating. I'm avoiding contact with these guys. Yeah. And I'm just... 
Yeah, that's Matt McEwen that we just saw there as well. He was, uh, of course, driving for Team Netherlands, and uh, sorry, for Team New Zealand, I should say. And uh, he, of course, is uh, frustrated, as you can tell, with the incident on track, which brought him down into 12th place. They managed to recover, meantime, up into P10. We're right on board here with Italy. No problems with the straight line speed for this Honda NSX. We're going to go three wide down the start, finish straight, then Italy on the outside, Japan in the middle. Spain relegated down, Japan nearly all out of shape. Somehow they managed to get the car stopped, but they can run wide. They're going to lose two positions here. Spain through on the inside, and Italy as well. And now Italy are going to be putting the pressure really onto the back of Spain as we come into the start of the fourth lap. Yeah, really big action there. And I've got to say, well held by Kobe Ashi. Somehow kept that car pointing the right way despite being well out of control and well too fast into the braking zone there. But these guys really, really fighting over these positions. Brazil handed a one-second penalty, so their race is going from bad to worse. But looking back from Team Spain at the moment, I, I tell you, Serrano's got quite a bit of pace under him. So if he can get a little bit of a gap now and have Italy maybe fight with Japan behind, th th that, that'll go the way for him. So in that full GT, masterfully there, navigating it through this very tight, twisty, grand baddy circuit. They're pretty much a street circuit. They saved a couple of little gravel runoffs, but uh, no room for mistake around this track. No, and Jose Serrano was the quickest man out of these three, only by a whisker, by about half a tenth of a second or so, over uh, Japan, who have now been relegated down to fourth place following Rakuta Kobayashi's amazing antics in towards that first corner. How on earth he was able to keep control of that car, I'm not quite sure, as we ride on board and go over over the viaduct for the next time. They still continue to run nose to tail here for second position. Look at that portion, a straight line, nothing in return for Italy or uh uh, Spain in front of them. And meanwhile, another penalty for Belgium. That puts Netherlands back up to P5. So back where they were before the penalty. Now, the question is, can Kai uh, take down that two and a half second gap to the cars in front? If they keep fighting the way they are, he'll be there fairly quickly. But uh, that Jack, we're fairly quick in this part of the race so far. Yeah, looking pretty good at the moment. We're not even at half race distance here in this one. So still plenty of time for things to develop. Killian Drumont, meanwhile, has managed to pull out some two and a half seconds over the retaining field. Helped, of course, by some penalties and a lot of score squabbling amongst these two drivers and we're going to continue that squabbling here now as well because the Porsche of Japan in the slipstream but Italy also in turn in the slipstream of Spain they go side by side Italy goes through in it and Japan managed to join in the party as well are they going to try and attack on the outside into T1 Spain have got the inside line but Japan have got great momentum are they going to be able to hold it the long way around the outside they are what a move there from Rakuta Kobayashi he's got the inside line still for the next corner and Japan up through back into the podium places yeah great respectful racing here from the guys, just allowing themselves the minimum amount of room for their opponents, but of course they'll take it. These are the best Grand Turismo drivers in the world right now, and they are displaying their talent. So we're on board with Valeria Gann, looking back there at Team Japan in that Porsche, but you're seeing the difference between the cars here and how well balanced they are. In the corners, that Porsche is a weapon, but down the straight, lacking a little bit of top speed of the NSX uh, of the GT around it. So it really is a cat and mouse game. It's a bit of a smile on the face there for Kobash. I think he's having a good time down there. Yeah, let's have another look and see if we can piece together here what happened here between Belgium and the Netherlands. This is when Belgium were about to serve their penalty coming on to the viaduct section of the circuit. Half second penalty. Belgium, I think, are just going to yeah, lose out there quite massively to the Netherlands. Kai de Bruyne going up into fifth place. So back inside the top five. But he's got an almighty deficit to close down before this race reaches its conclusion. Some two and a half seconds. Of course, it'll be helped by the fact that the three in front are all battling amongst one another. But some two and a half seconds is going to be a tall order to uh, get himself in control tension for a higher grip position than P5 as it stands. Yeah, Quinton Newhall managing to hold on to the back of Team Netherlands as well, so they're not out of it yet. So back on board here uh, with Team Japan. And in line 11, 996, a bit of a throwback. Just great to see it out here and being used. Uh, Rikuta Kobayashi at the wheel of this car. A uh, real-life racing driver is uh, Rikuta Kobayashi. A uh, very, very quick guy. Uh, F4 driver over in Japan. And, of course, showcasing the talents here. It's, it's so interesting to me that the skills are just directly transferable between sim racing and real-life racing on board. They're in deep into the toe of Team Italy. We're going to pull alongside now. It's going to be a drag race down towards T1, the Ford GT of Spain lurking in the background. Who's going to break later, then? Coming in to T1 is a hard break to the right hand. Italy diving back to the inside. Spain trying a long way around there. Three wide at the apex. Italy going to come out the victor, but will the Ford GT of T Spain be able to stay there? They are still there, out dragging Team Japan down to the next corner and they're just going to take the place away from Team Japan there. Well, the Italian commentator's going absolutely posse at that and Valerio Gallo having a big snap of oversteer there through the uh, 
far sweeping corners. Look at how beautiful this Grand Valley Highway circuit is. Such incredible work from the team at Polyphony Digital to get this one in the game and make it looking so amazing. Just goes to show how far technology has come over the last 25 years since Gran Turismo's first iteration. Meanwhile, on board, we ride here with Rakuso Kobayashi through in towards the right. Then they're going to flick it left. The mechanical grip of that Porsche really helping him in these slower corners. But as we know, it's not quite as fast in a straight line. But look at this, the gap between Japan yeah, yeah. and the Netherlands starting to shrink a little bit here now. Yes, yeah, so a fifth place now. Team Netherlands starting to catch up to the back of Team Japan and this little uh, 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 trio in front of them. So if they keep fighting the way they are, this might become a five-way battle for P2. But uh, Quinton Newhall hanging on there in the background. I think maybe at this point they're starting to work together a bit. They've been fighting themselves. There's no point really having too much of a scrap at the moment. Sort that out on the last lap. But for now, just try and focus on catching the guys ahead. Brazil doing a good job, actually. Adriano Carassa, despite the fact that he was down near the bottom end of the field following some earlier on penalties, he's now managed to get himself back up into eighth position. Bit of damage limitation uh, for that team as it stands at the moment. On board, we ride, meanwhile, with Kaida Brun. Look at him in the top left corner of your picture. Bottom left is Quinten Hall, the driver in the BMW, who is chasing him down. That jack, though, looks really handy around this circuit, especially in the straight line. But I don't know if it's going to be a match for the BM in uh, the fact of the slip stream, of course, that's going to come into play here, especially along this straight. Side by side they go, Belgium and Quinton Hall managing to get himself up ahead of the Netherlands before they go in towards the first corner. So Kaida Brun now with all that hard work to do over oh, again. Nearly run into the back of the car in front. A little reminder, of course, if you can predict the winner of the grand final before we start, you can win one million in-game credits. Easy money. So go and get yourself involved in that if you're watching along at home. Meanwhile, we go back to this fight for second, third and fourth. Team Japan now in fourth, of course, and it seems these guys are interchangeable. Gallo for Italy has done a good job of keeping that car sort of at the front of the pack at the moment, but all it takes is one little mistake, one little lock-up, one little bit of oversteer, and you're looking at defending from not one, but two cars, and saying that, Team Spain a little bit deep into the corner there. What's it like when you're in a position like this? If you're Jose Serrano, you're in the middle, you're trying to look at attacking the driver in front, but you've got to keep a watching brief on Kobayashi behind. The idea really is you just ignore the mirror. <laughs> the, the, the guy behind you does not exist. Try and focus on the guy ahead, then look in the mirror, maybe on the straights, going into the big braking zones, because you can't keep looking in your mirror, otherwise you will start making mistakes. But definitely, uh, Serrano not in the best position there. And you can see there Kobayashi getting all kinds of sideways in the Porsche, skillfully controlled there by the Japanese driver. As we come on to the back straight, one's going to cross the bridge there. You get a real idea of just the scale uh, of this circuit and of the gaps here as they emerge on the circuit. Meanwhile, in front of the field, Team France is a four-second gap over the rest of the field. We're not really putting on a clinic at the moment. So, Malaysia just picked up a little penalty there. They've served that now. Hasn't cost them too much time. They're down in ninth position with Danny Winkers Warren behind the uh, field. New Zealand have actually just managed to get to themselves up in front of the Malaysians. So, up inside the top ten uh, once again for Matt McEwen, who is behind the wheel of that Ferrari F40. On board, we still continue to ride here with Kaida Brun. Just a reminder, so Japan's already picked up a penalty there. Um, there's a penalty for Team Japan. That's really going to hamper their efforts for the top three there. As we go on board with Team Netherlands, look at the draft in the slipstream there, using the overspeed. Back by they go on Team Belgium, back up into fifth position. This is a game of chess here, but a penalty, of course, for Team Netherlands as well. So that might have been track limits. Didn't see what that was picked up there. One second penalty, that one. So quite a severe one. Yeah, we didn't see anything under investigation. There was no graphic on the top right of your screen, which generally indicates that there's been a smattering of contact between some drivers. Hopefully, we'll get a bit of an action replay and find out exactly what went wrong there for Kai De Bruyne. Either way, a second of a penalty, which is exactly what Japan have got here in the middle of this sandwich at the moment as well, is going to drop them not only behind Spain, but possibly into the clutches of the likes of Netherlands and Belgium. Opportunity knocks here for those two. A little reminder, of course, that the finishing positions for this race set the starting grid for the grand final. So every place counts here in the qualifying race. We go back on board with Team Spain in the Ford GT. Jose Serrano, of course, put in a fantastic drive yesterday in the Manufacturers' Cup, doing the same today to keep Spain in contention at the top of the field. Team Japan will serve that penalty. See the bar appear at the top of their screen there. When that fills up, the brakes will be applied for one second. So you tend to lose more 
more than a second, probably about two or three seconds there because of that. And uh, Kobe actually be kicking himself, but not much you can really do at this point apart from serve the penalty and try and make the best of it. Yeah, disappointing there. Belgium have also picked up a penalty as well to boot, so that will kind of negate the penalty that they've had. There is Japan serving their one. Where is he going to drop them back? So I suppose it's a bit of a moot point, really, because Netherlands and Belgium also serve their penalty. So that's a bit of a saving grace there for Rakuta Kobe. Actually, we're side by side here between Belgium and the Netherlands. You haul on the outside of De Bruyne. Is he going to manage to go the long way around the outside as they go through the tunnel? They burst into the daylight. De Bruyne holds firm in fifth for now. So really good defensive driving. Great clean racing between these two. Really enjoying this Netherlands versus Belgium rivalry at the moment. I'm very interested to see who comes out on top in a couple of laps time. So your race order as we come on to nearly the penultimate lap of the qualifying race. Team France leading with a healthy gap 4.4 seconds. Team Italy, Spain in third at the moment. Team Japan in fourth. Here's the battle for fifth. Netherlands and Belgium again using the slipstream down the straight. The Belgium driver will pull back by. Quinton Yo, a little bit of contact on the way through there. Uh, no love lost at this point, I think. It's starting to get a little bit feisty between these two. So two laps now remaining then here. This one has absolutely flown by and the grid is going to be anybody's guess as it stands at the moment. Looks like Kylian Drummond for France has got this one sewn up with a four and a half second lead there and thereabouts in front. But further down the order, it's very much undecided. De Bruyne having a half look there to the inside, but the door very firmly shut by Quinten Yahoo through these left right hand as the sweeping bends on the brakes down in towards first gear. Yahoo slightly wide on the apex of the corner, and he might be trying to set himself up for a bit of a dress rehearsal here. De Bruyne ready for a challenge on the last lap. Yeah, they're just looking at every little possibility now. When you're the chasing driver, it's always a good idea just to try and get into the mirrors of the car in front, try and distract them, try and get them looking at you and not the apex coming up as we rub the wall slightly there. You see uh, uh, Kai is really using every part of this Grand Prix circuit. It was a nice, good run there out of the corner. Would he be able to go around the left hand? He's going to have the inside here. The left hand, a clean move by uh, De Kai. They're going to make it work. Netherlands on the inside, Belgium on the outside. Next corner, though, is a right-hander. It's going to benefit Team Belgium, and they try and cut across there. Still Belgium on the inside, and Netherlands just about making the move for now, but it's a drag race down to the next corner. This is amazing stuff here between these two as they run side by side. Coming in towards the tunnel, Belgium on the inside, Netherlands on the outside. De Bruyne manages to get himself up into fifth place, but he's a bit deep. Belgium back up the inside and going through side by side into the left-hander. Kai De Bruyne back through into fifth. Yeah, the, ne the uh, Netherlands now and, uh, and both Belgium as well getting a warning from the stewards saying, calm down a bit, boys, you're getting a little bit feisty out there. I'm going to guess they're probably not going to listen to that because still, again, they're looking at each other once more. Team Belgium dipping right behind into the slipstream of the Netherlands. And now we've gone to this long front straight where I, I imagine we're going to see Belgium overtake here coming on to the final lap of the race. So we go down towards Team 1 once again. Belgium back past the Netherlands. But is this where you want to be? Do you want to be ahead going into the last lap or do you want to be, be behind? and using that slipstream to slingshot by at the start finish line. Well, it's anybody's guess as to how this one is going to work out. On board we ride here with Belgium. Netherlands there grazing the wall slightly on the outside of the corner for turn one in towards the sweeping bends. This is where the Jaguar of Kai de Brun was really strong last time around. He's now sitting once again in the wheel tracks of the Belgian driver. Up the inside, he sends it through into the hairpin. Can he get the car stopped on the inside? Yes, he can. De Bruyne and the Netherlands up through into fifth place, but is there going to be a retaliation here from Quinten Hall with just over half a lap to go? So now Kai needs to get his head down and try and make a little bit of a gap to the car behind because the draft, of course, is going to be working against him here. Penalties for Team Italy and Team Japan, both of them ahead of this battle. So that could still change things as we come in to the last half of the last lap then. So France lead, Italy second with a penalty, Spain third, Japan fourth with a penalty, Netherlands fifth and Belgium in sixth. Here's our leader, Kylian Drummond, fantastic Fantastic race from him so far. We've not spoken about him because he's been out front on his own. Penalties. Yeah. Oh, this is the penalty then for Italy. Is this going to cost them a possibility of the podium? Because Spain uh, really close behind. Japan have got their penalty to serve as well. And Spain go up through into second in the dying moments of this race. It's not over further down though because Belgium still close behind to the Netherlands. Kai de Brun, he's not quite close enough at the moment behind his Quintenia Hall to challenge Kai for fifth place. And I think that might be the last opportunity that he is going to be presented with. We'll see. We're in the final couple of corners then as we come through here. Here is 
Uh, Kylian Drummond, 14 France. What an absolute exhibition it has been for the Frenchman and the French team. They win the qualifying race for the Nations Cup in the World Series showdown across the line. Lights the flag victory for Team France here at Grand Valley Speedway. Second place will go to Spain in the last few moments of that race. Italy finishing in third, Japan in fourth, and Kaida Brun for the Netherlands does get the better of Quintin Hall for Team Belgium with sixth place. Brazil recovers after a challenging start to seventh place ahead of Canada, Malaysia, New Zealand, the USA, and Chile. What a fantastic race. Jose Serrano there just walking away from his rig and he was so incredibly fortunate to have that penalty in front of him uh, for Team Italy right at the very end of that one as we saw Kylian Drummond celebrating uh, down in the uh, on the stage area as well. I mean, there was action wherever you looked up and down the field, JB. Yeah, you wouldn't have known it's just a qualifying race, would you? <laughs> These guys are properly going at it. So if that race is anything to go by, the grand final is going to be something special. A reminder, of course, the finishing position of this race do set the grid for the grand final. We'll have confirmation of that very, very shortly. But this is really only about 5% of the job, Tom. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get some highlights for this in a few moments. Time was the French team talking down there. On the left of your picture is Baptiste Beauvoir. In the middle is Thomas Le Boutelet. On the right is the man who just won that race for Team France of Kylian Drummond. Valerio Gallo on the right-hand side of your picture for Team Italy. Just talking with his teammates at the moment. And they'll be disappointed with that penalty that they had to serve on the last lap. It cost them second place on the grid for the final. Yeah, Shane Vitter, Gallo drove a pretty much perfect race until then. But anyway, here are our race highlights. And Team Netherlands, of course, starting down in P8. Very quickly went to work, getting by Team New Zealand very quickly up to seventh place. And of course, then chasing and uh, up to Team Brazil as Belgium as well in the wars. Brazil, though, a bit of a race to forget for those guys. Yeah, not exactly a particularly fortuitous start for them. They were in P6 on the grid. And, well, you can see the gesticulation there from Adriano Carazzo was not happy at all dropped down into 10th place in the early stages. Meanwhile, this was Kaida Brun and Quinten Hall, the story really of the race as far as fifth place was concerned. Up the order we went, and this is the battle for second position. Keep an eye out for this. Oh. How do you manage to lock the rears like that and keep the car still on the straight and narrow? Rakuto Kobayashi used up about six of his nine lives going into that first corner. Yeah, very well held there. No idea how he came back from that one at all. And that fight would go on for the entire race. Italy, Japan and Spain were inseparable for every lap through here. Every uh, different lap, really different overtake, different order. Team Italy, though, for the most part, managed to stay up front. And there is a Valeria Gao there at work there. Uh, massive capacity he has for both racing and talking to his team at the same time. And again, you can see just how challenging this Porsche was to drive for Team Japan. Yeah, it really was a bit all over the place, wasn't it, in terms of uh, sliding around. You can see this penalty uh, for Japan that they had in the latter stages of the race, and they could have profited possibly from Italy's penalty on the final lap if it wasn't for them having gotten another one. This is Belgium versus the Netherlands. Side by side, they went over the start finish line in towards the first corner, and again, later on in the lap, over the viaduct of this picturesque Grand Valley Highway circuit. This was an incredible amount of commitment and also respect. I think we only counted half a time, uh, one or two times of contact between the two uh, going through. They were just giving each other no quarter, but it was clean and it was fair. And uh, yeah, it, it was. And the stewards took him a little bit for warning at the end, but it was this move that was very important for Team Netherlands, just putting a, a overtake up the inside there on the BMW and not phased at all. But it was France, of course, came away the victory there, dominant by them, six seconds ahead of Spain, Italy, Japan, Netherlands P5, Belgium in P6 there, and uh, a little thanks for there. But uh, Drummond there celebrating his win. He knows uh, he's got a long way to go yet. Yeah, absolutely amazing stuff from our qualifying race. Here are the results then. France take the victory from Team Spain. This is how your grid will line up for the final later on here tonight. Ahead of Italy, Japan, the Netherlands, Belgium, Brazil, Canada, Malaysia, New Zealand, the USA, and then Chile down there in 12th position with a fair bit of work to do come the next race here later on this afternoon. Well, this has been a hugely exciting qualifying race. France with an absolute exhibition, really. Kylian Drummond controlled that one from the second the lights went out. Yeah, definitely. For those guys, you know, they were very keen to pick the Mercedes first, and I think maybe I, I know why now. But uh, <laughs> to be honest, it was really great to see these different cars uh, race together. I mean, we usually have in Group 3 machines, Group 4 machines, but these kind of production-based road cars with a little bit of a tune on them. I, I love this sort of stuff. I live for this sort of race, and so it was, it was great to watch here, yeah, and great to commentate on as well. Oh, yeah, the drivers were fun. 
fighting those cars all race long. I mean, you saw Rikuta Kobayashi <laughs> yeah. downing towards the first call at full on Tokyo Drift style, getting the car backed into it. Somehow he managed to keep that facing in the straight line because I thought he was going to run to the, you know, the outside onto the dirt stuff, and that would have really cost him a lot more. I would have loved to have seen the onboard from that and the panic on his face going, <laughs> on the way into the thing. But yeah, somehow managed to, to, to keep it alive there. But of, uh, a bit of a disappointing race for Team Brazil. We mentioned that. It looked fairly promising at the start there, but maybe the, the car not quite up to scratch. We saw there was a bit of a, there was sort of a cork in the bottle at the start of the race and just got bashed about at the end. So uh, not ideal for those guys. No, not at all. But still plenty of time for redemption with the grand final coming along the way a little bit later on here tonight. So looking forward to seeing what is going to happen with that one. Now, of course, uh, with Gran Turismo, we have got a brand new wheel partner for 2023. The Fanatec DD Pro is the wheel of choice for our competitors. Let's talk you through exactly what this wheel is all about. It's great to have Fanatec here in the World Series Showdown, especially because due to the direct drive. We feel much more the responsiveness, which is very important with reaction, and also uh, the reliability. We have a lot of things in common with polyphony. I think uh, both is important to give the racers the ultimate experience at home to be a race driver. And let's see what the, the pros can make out of it. Well, here is the grid for the grand final then. France will start on pole position with Kylian Dumont, Baptiste Beauvoir and Thomas Laboutelet as their driver lineup. Spain will line up P2 ahead of Italy. Then you'll have Japan, the Netherlands in P5 ahead of Belgium, just by a whisker at the end of that race, by the way. And then, of course, it's Brazil, Canada, Malaysia, New Zealand, the USA, and then Chile. So this is going to be a really exciting one. Jimmy, if you were a gambling man, and I'm not suggesting that you are for a moment because I know how bad your luck is, um, <laughs> Who would you be looking at there? I'd be in a ditch somewhere if I was gambling. Uh, <laughs> I definitely wouldn't be here. But uh, some really strong teams. I've got to say, Team Japan, really, really strong team there. Kobayashi, of course, I think one of the quickest drivers here today, to be honest. Them and, of course, Team Spain. Serrano did such a good job yesterday. Got to look out for him as well. Absolutely. Well, we're about ready then to get the grand final underway, but not, of course, before we introduce the 12 nations that are going to be lining up on the grid ahead of the grand final here tonight. So, as the curtains open here in Amsterdam, please welcome on stage, it is Team Chile. Harold Wilson and Felipe Munoz as their driver lineup for this evening. The 11th team on the grid will be the Team USA, Kevin Pounder, Donovan Parker and Randall Hayward. Hollywood Hayward. <laughs> Hollywood Hayward, good point, well made. Lining up P10 on the grid, it'll be Team New Zealand, their driver lineup of Matt McEwen, Cy Bishop, and Thomas England. Team Malaysia with three drivers at their disposal Danny Wigglis Warren, Taj Iman, and Melvin Chung. Eighth position on the grid is going to be Team Canada. Their driver lineup is comprised of Ethan Lim, Trent Jeffrey, and Mark Pinnell. P7 on the grid is going to be Team Brazil. Adriano Carazza, Lucas Benelli, and former champion Igor Fraga. P6 on the grid will be Team Belgium with Quinten Hall, Giovanni Balerashi, and Keanu De Vroux. Team Netherlands lining up P5 on home soil here in Amsterdam. Kai De Bruyne, Floris Zimmerman and Rick Kevelum. Fourth place in this one for the grid is going to be Team Japan. Rakuta Kobayashi, Takuma Sasaki and Saya Suzuki. Third on the grid then will be Team Italy. Valerio Gallo, Giorgio Mangano and Marco Busnelli. <laughs> Starting on the front row, it is going to be Team Spain in second position with Jose Serrano, reigning champion Coque Lopez and Paul Yura. And pole position here for the grand final in the Nations Cup tonight. Team France with their driver lineup of Kylian Drummond, Baptiste Beauvoir, and Thomas Le Boutelet. <laughs> hey! 
And before we kick off proceedings here tonight, we now ask for your respect, please, for the national anthem of our host country, the Netherlands. National Anthem for the Netherlands reigns out here in Amsterdam. So, 35 drivers are ready to go for the Nations Cup. Let's talk you through and meet them as we get ready to go for the Grand Final. The new format of the Nations Cup is very special. Instead of being individually based, it's team based. Oh, this will be the first time to be a team format of individual competition. I really like because it makes you have to think more with your nation's mates. It's a good energy to have an esprit d'équipe, surtout pour une équipe nationale. Pour les équipes, c'est-à-dire d'avoir une sorte de fraternité entre eux et d'être bien soudé entre nous. Now you have to really work together as a team and have confidence in each other to have a good race. More important to have a balanced driver so there's one super fast one. Spain has the strongest lineup because they have some very experienced drivers, one of them being the current world champion as well. Coco Lopez becomes the 2022 Nations Cup World Champion! It's a fun fact that even if I'm world champion of the 2022 Nations Cup, I'm the slowest one for, uh, from the three Spanish guys. Team France is looking pretty strong for the Nations Cup. France has just a very very strong lineup. Some of the fastest in Gran Turismo, like full stop. Killian's just come off winning a Olympic gold medal, so there's not too many people who can say that. Les plus rapides et les plus fortes, je pense que ça va être bah, la France évidemment, Italie, et euh, je m'attends à ce que le Japon soit très fort aussi. Japan has one of the strongest like teams. They have a lot of guys who are, you know, at the top of the leaderboard all the time. Well. Great to meet some of the drivers and give you an idea as to the personalities behind the uh, Nations Cup lineup here this evening for the grand final ahead of this in the World Series showdown. Now, of course, we're not only live in English tonight, we're live in six other languages. There are our international commentators in Portuguese, Japanese, Spanish, Italian, German, and in French as well. Don't say we don't give you a bit of variety. Exactly. Truly a worldwide broadcast here on Grand Trismo. Our little GT family. Aren't we cute? Aren't yeah. we lovely? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, anyway, before we get this one underway, let's go down to Julia, shall we? She's with our team that are starting on pole position of Team France. Yeah, thanks, Tom. I'm joined by two thirds of Team France. So, hi, guys. Um, we, didn't, we didn't even see you driving. You were just so far ahead, you were off. How was that drive for you? Hey, at the start, it's a little bit stress. It's all nervous because it's very difficult to uh, to do a gap with the road car. So yeah, yeah. I mean. But you, you yeah. know, how did you feel about the pick though? You got to pick, you know, the car that you wanted. Was that super important? Did it make you feel good before starting the race? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good because uh, second laps uh, I have a gap behind me, so and the guys behind me did some some battle, so I am I am what, did it all I'm battle? yeah. The whole thing was battle for so, yeah, that I, one. Yeah, I need to finish the race and uh, maybe I got a P1 for the, for the end. So yeah. Yeah, you know, just pop by McDonald's drive-through on the way to the yeah yeah. Um, but okay, so Baptiste, uh, excited for today. Um, fresh day. You're 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 ahead. What's kind of how are you feeling going into today? You feeling positive? Feeling good? 
Well, uh, racing with Kylian uh, makes you confident so much. Um, Doesn't it? Look at that face. It is, yeah. For me, he's the best player in the world right now. So, <laughs> yeah, sharing the, uh, the grand final race with him and also Thomas, of course, it's, uh, it's a pleasure. And, uh, yeah, we're going to try our best. It's not going to be easy. Spain looks look strong, Italy as well, yeah. Japan too. We're going to give our best and... Uh, Let's try to enjoy it, of course. Yeah. And what do you think? What do you think about having the audience? Is it does it make you more nervous or less nervous? Are they helping? What do you think? It's good. It's, it's good. good. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> well, look, um, fantastic qualifiers, guys! Congratulations. Enjoy the race. We're going to enjoy the race, and uh, good luck to all the competitors. We're going to chuck it back to Tom and Jimmy. Yeah, thank you very much indeed. Jules, ready to go for the grand final in just a few moments' time. But before we do that, we should probably talk you through uh, the circuit, the car combination, and what we were sort of expecting from this race, because it's going to be an absolute thriller. Yeah, definitely. We are, of course, at Lago Maggiore. Rate my pronunciation, please, Italians. I gave them my best Zero. shot there. Thank you very much. But we are, <laughs> of course, in uh, the legendary Gran Turismo Red Bull X 2019, an incredibly quick prototype downforce car using the racing hard, medium, and soft tyres. Now, rule for this one, each tyre must be used for eight continuous laps. You can't just get rid of the hard tyre straight away. You've got to use that for eight laps at a time as well. Also, a dry a wear rate of four times. So the tyres are going to wear a little bit quicker than would usually if you're just playing alone at home on your own. Rolling start, 30 laps as well. And of course, a team game. Each driver must drive at least once here as well. And uh, that's part of a strategy here. When do you use which driver? Absolutely, yeah. Of course, Lago Maggiore is an incredible circuit. Fictional track within GT7. Now, we asked you to get your predictions in ahead of this one. 25% of you think Spain are going to win. 25% of you think Brazil are going to win, which is a bit of a left field choice given what happened in the qualifying race. 21% of you are going for uh, Japan as well. So that's interesting. France, not in the top three. Not at the moment, no. But of course, on a pole position for this race, grand final about to get underway here here in Amsterdam. First time we've had a live audience since 2020. Super excited to get underway. Our drivers, no doubt at the moment, though, starting to feel the pressure. Thomas Abutale seeming to be the starting driver yeah, there for absolutely. Team France. Let's get into it. Yeah, it's going to be really hugely exciting. Let's get ready to get the grand final underway for the Nations Cup. then for the grand final of the Nations Cup in the World Series showdown here in Amsterdam. The drivers are in their rigs, they're lined up and ready to go ahead of 30 laps of racing action. What is going to happen when the chequered flag falls? We're about to find out. On pole position then, Team France with Thomas Le Boutelet as their starting driver. Alongside on the front row of the grid is Pole Euro for Team Spain. Row two is Italy and Giorgio Mangano ahead of Japan's Rakuto Kobayashi. Fifth position on the third row of the grid is Florian Zimmerman. A massive cheer from the crowd here as well ahead of Belgium's uh, De Bro. Then you've got Benelli for Brazil in P7 on the grid ahead of Canada's Troy Jeffrey. P9 is Chung for Malaysia. Tenth on the grid will be New Zealand and Matt McEwen starting for that team. And then the USA, you've got Donovan Parker in P11. And completing the grid is Harold Volson for Team Chile. So, three different tyre compounds available. Here's our first look at them. France going medium, Spain going soft, Italy going medium, medium as well. Yes, yeah, so what that means is Spain is going to be incredibly fast at the start of this race. They're looking to try and take the lead as soon as possible and then try and drive away from the field. A bit further down the field, Canada going for the medium tyre, as are New Zealand, trying to improve their position. Of course, the medium tyre sitting between the soft and hard compound soft being the fastest but least durable hard being the most durable but not as quick and medium sitting somewhere in the middle 
So then, drivers making their way around the final corner, getting some heat into the tyres and the brakes. 30 laps of action awaits them here ahead of the grand final. Here are the tyre strategies. You can see them on your screen. That's what we're reckoning is going to happen over the course of this one. So keep an eye out for Team Porsche. As Jimmy said, they're going to be hugely fast in the opening stages of the race. But will it come back to haunt them when we get in towards the final third? We're about to find out what is going to happen. As we get ready then, the grand final for the World Series showdown in the Nations Cup. It's lights out and we go racing then as France lead the field down towards the first corner here at Lago Maggiore for the first time. Side by side there with Brazil and Canada for seventh place. Brazil then with the outside line in towards two and Canada holding position there for now. But France still continuing on the lead of the race. But Spain, especially in these first couple of corners, look at how much more grip they've got there. They are right on the gearbox of France here and trying to take the lead of the race away. They're already there right into the rear wing of Team France must be moved down here to the bottom. Team Spain go to the inside that stop Combinator immediately up into the lead. That is super important there uh, for Euro. He needs to get away quickly and put away from Team France. The Boutelé uh, in the uh, French car right now, incredibly fast driver. So uh, Team Spain definitely have their work cut out for them. Behind them, Team Italy about a second dropped already from Team France. Japan in form and Netherlands in P5 on that hard Combinator. They've got a bit of an alternate strategy have Team Netherlands. I'll be interested to see how that pans out over the the course of the race. Team France getting very close there, you're seeing the sip stream in action, but then going a little bit wide down the bottom there and losing a bit of ground with Team Spain. You can see there Italy coming under a lot of pressure here from Japan as they come through in towards the left and then the right-hander. Japan really putting the pressure on. Is Kobayashi going to go for a move on Giorgio Mangano here? He's going to try and send it down the inside in towards the final series of corners in the right-hander. Italy holding firm on the outside there. A smattering of body contact, but Kobayashi goes through into the podium places at the end of the opening lap. I think that's Suzuki in the car there. Our graphics wrong in the moment. So Suzuki in the car for Team Japan at the moment, saving Kobayashi for a bit later, but a good opening stint there from the Japanese driver ahead of Team Italy. Uh, Italy currently has Giorgio Mangano uh, at the wheel. Uh, meanwhile, Team Netherlands uh, in P5 having to defend heavily from Canada and using the reminder, Team Netherlands are on the slower compound of tyre right now, so they are going to be under attack and they are going to be at risk for the first stint. Uh, how we're going to basically, uh, how we're going to decide this is by our New Zealand looking up the inside, having a vote for the Netherlands sideways on exit, goes off onto the runoff area there. Zealand, New Zealand up to P5, Canada to P6 and Brazil past Netherlands. They go from fifth to eighth in one corner, but you have to think that might be being looked at the stewards right now. Yeah, I think you could be completely spot on there, JB. On board we ride, and he's going to see them romping away, colliding with another car, exactly under investigation between New Zealand then and the Netherlands. So New Zealand now in fifth, then it's Canada, then it's Brazil, then it's the Dutchman of Florian Simmerman, who we ride on board with here. The problem is, he's on the hard tyres, the three in front are on the medium, so he's just going to see them clear off into the distance, which if nothing else is going to be a little bit soul destroying there for him as it stands for now. We'll wait and see exactly what happens as the sparks fly on the compression down in towards this hairpin. I absolutely love this Lego Maggiore circuit. It's always going to provide some great racing, loads of medium speed corners. But one thing that we should mention as well here, Jimmy, is the fact that we're going to get some dirty air, I'm sure, coming in as well here. And that will cause a bit of understeer as New Zealand do indeed pick up a one second penalty. Yeah, that penalty there for shoving Team Netherlands off the circuit. So that'll be a penalty for Team New Zealand. Meanwhile, as you say, we are up behind Team Japan and the dirt here. These cars produce a lot of downforce. All the wings and winglets on here help glue the car to the ground at high speed. But when you have a car in front of you, it takes away that airflow and you find yourself with massive understeer. You can't quite get close to the car in front. So right now, Team Italy having a, a bit of a tough job trying to stay with them right now as Team Belgium go up into P10 there, getting by uh, Chile. Uh, I think uh, struggling a bit at the start there, Team Belgium. New Zealand with a penalty here then as well in fifth position. So that's going to cost them a bit of time. Canada only eight tenths of a second uh, in front of them as it stands for now, uh, behind them rather I should say, as it stands for now, so they could be set to take profit because as you can see a one second penalty it's not only the second that you lose though because of course the penalty zone is on a straight and when you take that penalty you're slower than the other cars that are behind you because they're already up to speed, your car isn't and as such you could lose one and a half, sometimes two seconds here so it could be quids in for Canada as it stands on lap three. That penalty line coming up now for New Zealand so will they lose a place to Team Canada, Brazil there lurking 
working as well on that hard compound attire, the first of the hard runners. So not a bad start for Team Brazil. Easy pass there. Canada up into P5. Will Brazil get them as well? No, not quite close enough. But for Team Brazil, this is a good start for them. Now, they might be down in P7 currently, but they are the leader of that hard compound attire. You can see there in the tire column, the H next to their name, meaning they've still got the two faster compounds to go. So the closer they can stay to the guys on the quicker compounds at the start of the race, the better they're going to look at the end of the race in 27 laps time. Race leaders, Spain at the moment, some 4.7 seconds out in front mm. of uh, Thomas Laboutle. Last time around, it was a 1 minute 30 for Paul Jura. It was a 132.3 for Thomas Laboutle for Team France. That just goes to show the pace difference here between these two tyre compounds as New Zealand now sitting once again on the gearbox of Team Canada. Trent Jeffrey coming under a lot of pressure here from Matt McEwen. Yeah, new, a new face for us, Trent Jeffrey. Good to see him doing uh, doing well here, representing his country, Canada, as we now go down towards the second part of the course. Now we go down towards uh, this awesome bank right handy. You see Canada and New Zealand uh, pretty much in the wheel tracks at the moment. And uh, here we go into the right hand of replay at the moment. So, yeah, let's have a look here. New Zealand then, oh, a bit of contact there between themselves and the Netherlands. And you can see them there going through on the inside. As we look at New Zealand then, sixth position then for them as it stands here now. Through into the left and then the right-hander as they uh, continue to press on as it stands. This is a great driver's eye view of it and you can see the effect of the slipstream as you come down this back straight in towards the hairpin there, closing up on the brakes. But no room at the end for Matt McEwen to find his way past at the moment. Here we are at the hill there, Matt McEwen right in the world track. Tim Cannon using that slipstream right now. Absolutely right, yeah, and I think he's going to find his way through then up the inside is Matt McEwen. Can he get the move done into fifth place? I think he can, and he does. So he holds firm then into uh, fifth place then for now. So the medium shod runners up into uh, fifth position. Now a nice bit of clear track in front of them here, Jimmy. Five seconds is the gap between themselves and Italy. What are they going to be able to do with this? Well, really, at the moment, it's, it's a big gap for trying to try and reel in. I think Team Italy have the pace right now on that medium compound of tyres, so just about trying to keep things uh, on the straight and narrow. Uh, good uh, scrap so far between New Zealand uh, and Canada. Of course, that does mean Brazil are somewhat still in the mix at the moment. So, track on track right now, but um, still not at the moment quite close enough to make a move. Team Spain at the moment, of course, in that soft compound attire. Bear in mind, these guys are all pretty much equal on pace, or give, give a 10 for 10 each way. That tyre compound making a big difference, but of course, Spain will have to serve the slower tyres a bit later on. So on board here we ride with Trent Jeffrey of Team Canada then, and what are they going to be able to do? They should be able to keep pace ahead of Brazil. Last time around, their lap time was a 133.7. Brazil with Lucas Benelli at the helm was a 134.2. So a fair bit of difference between them and that uh, I'm sure is going to continue for a fair amount of time. This is what we're used to seeing in these sort of races that are a little bit longer and you have to consider a strategy in them as well. Is they're generally a little bit slower in the opening stages but they come right to fruition with the divergence in strategies towards the end of the race. So be very keen to see how this one is going to play out here. Meanwhile, Spain and Paul Jura extended that advantage to nearly nine seconds out in front. They were two seconds a lap faster than anybody else out on track last time. Yeah, soft tyre speed would be crazy at the moment. So just try and the, the job really of your Team Spain is just to optimise every lap. Run the qualifying laps until that tyre runs out. We think that tyre is going to be good enough for 10 or 11 laps around there. That's when we're going to see our pit stops uh, for the soft tyre. And we'll probably see the hard tyre runners, as you can see our tyre strategies are on screen at the moment, coming into the pits around lap 8. Try and get rid of that tyre as quick as possible and get onto the faster compound of tyre. Right now, the lead of that hard tyre uh, train, as you would say, is Team Brazil, Netherlands behind them, and USA in P9, Belgium rounding out the top 10. We're on board now with Paul Euro for Spain. Driver's eye view of this Lago Maggiore circuit at speed, completely flat through here, 300 kilometers an hour now, getting up to nearly 200 miles an hour as we come down to the heavy braking zone down at the bottom. 320 kph, 330 kph, heavy on the anchors, turn the car to the inside, use the camber and the downforce, and let the car just 
drift out to the outside. So much grip in these Red Bull X 2019s that you can be super confident at pretty much every corner and it will just go through it at max speed. Yeah, this is an absolutely brilliant display of driving. It just shows how on the edge that Paul Eura is in these machines. You've got to be so finite and so uh, careful as it stands through these couple of corners as they come through down in towards the left-hander here. Nice, smooth inputs of the steering back on the power using the aerodynamics there to his full advantage. This is down the start finish straight in towards the 90 degree uh, left-hander of turn number one. And that's a prime overtaking uh, opportunity. And then in towards the, the right of turn number two as Belgium now elevating themselves ahead of the USA into ninth position a little bit further down the order. Yeah, so a, a good move there. Um, from Team Belgium. We see a little bit of a scrap there for 9th, 10th and 11th at the moment. So uh, even though these guys are not really in contention of the, the top lock right now, of course, getting themselves in a good position for the, the next couple of sins is very important. Team Malaysia at the moment uh, rounding off the field in P12. Meanwhile, Belgium there, only a couple of attempts ahead of Team USA at the moment. Yep, so no tail running here between 9th, 10th and 11th position then as they come through in towards the left and then the uh, right-hander. So let's see what Defro is going to be able to do behind the wheel of that car. Keanu, new face in the GT World Series. Side by side for Chile and the USA for Pete Chen trying to get into the top 10 there. USA just about holding on there from Team Chile all the way off onto the kerb. They're using all the circuit and a little bit more to defend there from the Chilean team. So 9th, 10th and 11th separated by not very much right now. We're getting up now to the point, nearly on lap eight, where we're going to see these hard runners come into the pit lane. We're on board now with Team Chile, obviously missing a driver. Uh, Angelina Strohs are unfortunately injured and unable to compete. We wish him well. Hope he'll be back with us soon. Let's see if they can, uh, Team Chile can do him proud. As we go now down to the last corner, a bit of a late move there from Team USA. For me, the stewards won't like that. But uh, the Chilean driver there, clever enough to make sure not to run into the back of the car in front. Yeah, Donovan Parker behind the wheel of the uh, American Machine team at the moment as they come through. They've got great momentum here of Chile. They're going to try and look the long way around the outside, but no room at the end there for now. Parking the car on the apex there is Donovan Parker. As it stands, his teammates will be watching on. They'll be working out and adapting the strategy, be talking to him in the car as well with the advantage of team radio through into the left-hander. Now, this is one of the prime overtaking opportunities down that start finish straight. A bit further up the order, here is the last of the medium shot runners of Team Canada. Still Trent Jeffrey, who sits behind the wheel of that one. Nobody's pitting here on lap eight as it stands for now, but we're getting closer and closer to that window as some team radio. Uh, they feel great. Just keep going. So it sounds like they're, they're going to try and extend that medium stint as long as possible. Uh, of course, give the soft tyres a little bit less to do at the end of the race, and of course, run those hard tyres for a fewer lap as possible. So, coming on to that lap eight now. So, I'll say that you were saying Chile's still fighting at the back here for 10th and 11th place. You have to wonder, maybe, better for them to work together, because Team Belgium in front is starting to pull away a little bit. You don't be fighting too hard at the start of the race to then compromise your race at the end. It's all about thinking about the long game here in these endurance-style races. This is a team game, a team radio here from Team so Belgium. this is my final lap. Giovanni got ready for a driver swap. Yes, that's it. Oh, so Team Belgium will be absolutely thrilled with the fact that that radio message was broadcast and it's now just released that information to the other 11 nations here. So Belgium going to be pitting then at the end of lap nine. Is anybody else going to be following suit though? We're about to find out as we come in towards the final stages then of this lap. We ride on board meanwhile still with Team Chile chasing down the USA for 10th position. They've been close, but they've not really had the opportunity to find a way through. And exactly as you thought there, Jimmy, Donovan Parker being slapped on the wrist with a warning for illegal blocking. Yeah, so now we're starting to see teams come into the pit lane. Predictably, all the hard runners diving into the pit lane at the moment. So, in comes uh, Team Netherlands, Team Brazil, Team Belgium, USA, Chile and Malaysia. A big cheer there uh, for the Dutch driver as he gets out the car. Very passionate home crowd here. Great to have a live audience here once again as new drivers get in. The medium tyres going on for every team who pitted so far. Rick Kevlar now getting in the car for Team Netherlands. That nice fancy new graphic on the screen. Thank you very much, graphic guy. We like that one. <laughs> and uh, Malaysia there. We haven't seen their tyre compound just yet. I think they've gone uh, 
They, have they stayed in the hard compound? No, they've, time? they've gone to the hard compound. They let's have a look. I'm just trying to see on our graphic because we've got it down here. Uh, they did nine laps on the hard, and then yeah, as you say, it looks like they've gone out on the hard again. Oh, so a mistake so, there in the pit box there. That's seemingly, that. yeah. Yeah, part of its competition is getting all those selections correct, and it looks like Team Malaysia has not done that. So Team Spain, look at those rear tyres on uh, the uh, Team Spain car, down to 23%. So at this point, uh, Paul Euro is going to have a bit of a, a bit of trouble trying to get that car out of course. You can see there on the kerb starting to wiggle a little bit. So you have to wonder, is this going to be the last lap for our leader on this compound tyre? I think it very well could be. He was quite deep in towards turn one there. He was very lucky to get the car stopped, but it's the traction now where Paul Euro is going to begin to struggle. You can see, especially on the uh, rear right-hand side of the tyre, that is where the grip is at its least for the Spaniard. He's just going to be sort of going round through here now as they sort of begin to fall off of the cliff. So let's have a look at this now. All of the hard compound runners have come in and all but Malaysia seemingly have changed over to the medium compound of tyre. Looks like a mistake there for Malaysia as New Zealand have picked up some kind of a penalty in fifth position. So we should be expecting uh, Euro and Spain to probably come in, I would say, at the end of this lap because I don't think those tyres are going to last any longer than lap number 10. Now, if you're on the medium tyre, of course, they're a little bit more durable. They are that little bit slower, but how are they going to play this one? What are they going to do? Are they going to try and go a little bit longer in this opening stage of the race and just carry on as they need to? Or are they going to come in and try and stick a set of soft boots on the car as Malaysia come in and try and right their wrongs, changing eventually from the hard to the medium tyre? But it's ruined their race, unfortunately. Yeah, that's just pressure there. It can happen. But uh, penalty there for Team New Zealand, 0.5 second penalty. Shouldn't hurt them too much. Does allow Canada to close in behind, though. And, uh, yeah, that, that's uh, you hate to see that on the, on the live stage. It's really easy to have that issue. So you can see there, Baptiste Beauvoir standing over the shoulders of uh, Thomas de for Team uh, team France there. So Zaki also standing over the shoulder of his compatriot Suzuki in the car for them at the moment. So it's looking like this is going to be the lap, but then see some driver changes. Yep, certainly could be the case as we ride on board here with Trent Jeffrey then. Trying to get himself past Matt McEwen. So France, Japan, Italy coming into the pit lane at the end of lap 11. Will anybody else follow suit? So medium to the hard tyres then, seemingly, at least for France and uh, Italy. And the same also for Japan, as it turns out as well. So a change of drivers for them, a change of tyres. They must change the driver every time they come into the pits. And let's see who they decide to put in. France go for Baptiste Beauvoir. Japan go for Sasaki. And then Italy have got Busnelli in that machine. Just to confirm what Jimmy was saying earlier on, it did say it was Kobe Ashley on our graphic but it was in fact Sayer Suzuki who was behind the wheel in the opening stages but uh, no penalty for them that just proved to be seemingly an admin error the option is now that it is Sasaki that is behind the wheel of the car for Team Japan now Baptiste Beauvoir in the car for Team France someone who has uh, been a bridesmaid many times but never a bride in one of these events so we'll see what he can do here replay here of Team USA what happened here then down the bottom of the course Team 2 behind oh and just gets it sideways on exit such a frustrating error. These cars, once they go around, there's not much saving them. They're very, very snappy. They're meant to rotate quickly. When you get a bit too enthusiastic on the, on the loud pedal, it can end that way. So France at the moment, P4, leading Team Japan behind, Italy behind them, all on that hard compound of tyre. Waiting for Team Spain to get in the moment. And Coque Lopez, our reigning Nations Cup champion, is going to get into the car for Team Spain. So our leader pits in, gets out the, uh, the, uh, the car now. Now let's see what the gap is. And bear in mind, Team Spain going to that medium tyre now. It was 24.6 seconds, wasn't it, as they came into the pit lane. They looked like they've just about got a pit stop in hand here, Team Spain. I know it's over New Zealand and Canada, of course, but it's further down the order you need to be keeping an eye out on. The likes of France and Japan, they've already made their pit stops as Lopez now comes into the foray for Team Spain here. Yeah, France and Japan really close right now. Only a tenth of a second between them. So it looks like Japan opting for a move maybe on Team France. Here they are together. They've got no space between them whatsoever. And now Japan is going to have the draft all the way down the back straight. Will they be able to make a move into this left hand a bit too far back? I think now for a move, yes. Zaki at the wheel there for Japan. France have Baptiste Beauvoir, a vastly experienced driver here, but not quite got the pace at the moment early on in these hard tyres. It's quite a challenge to get these tyres warmed up quickly. And I think right now, Zaki's done a better job of that. It's working out absolutely beautifully here for Team Spain. They've got 4.6 seconds, 4.8 seconds now on the medium tyres over New Zealand, who haven't made their pit stops. So those medium tyres that New Zealand are on are going to be uh, coming towards the end of their useful 
digital shelf life. France and Japan under investigation for a bit of illegal blocking there. That'll be because of uh, Baptiste Beauvoir then, presumably, who is the driver that is under investigation because, of course, he's the one that's ahead and therefore he'd have been the one that is doing the blocking. But, of course, just to counter what I was saying about Spain, it's working out beautifully for them now, but the crucial point is they are going to build the hard tyre, the slowest combat of tyre in the last stages of this race, which might leave them under attack as other teams like France, like Japan, use the soft tyres in the latter stages. They'll be quicker. Okay, we're going for a move there. Big lunge there from Suzaki and Team Japan. And France have no idea what to do there. Apart from getting the position, tries to get back by again, but it blocked well. That was a really nice move there by Suzaki. Used the overspeed. Decisive move to the inside there. Got the move done. Will we now see retaliation from Baptiste Beauvoir for Team France? Uh, still uh, nose to tail as they come through the last section. But this section through here, Tom, all about medium speed. So you're going to start losing a bit of aero if you're that close behind but Beauvoir is glued to the rear wing of Team Japan he's not going to take his one line down it's all going to be about the exit of this corner then if he can set something up down towards the first turn New Zealand in the pit lane they'll go past them and it will release the top four to be exactly as they were as they come down towards T1 so Beauvoir exactly as you said in the dirty air there wasn't quite able to get the exit that he needed out of that corner but he sits all over the rear wing through turn one and turn two do you know what this needs a bit more spice look behind them Team Canada on the soft compound attire they are absolutely flying right now fastest car on circuit and they are carving through the field and these guys team japan team france on the hard compound the tires they're going to have no answer and what that's going to do is just slow them both down the idea is you have to try and run the fastest race possible and try and get involved in any of these squabbles but they naturally happen of course as you uh, try and make the the way through your circuit so right now we're on board with baptiste Beauvoir. he's fallen back a little bit for this midsection but he's going to have the same advantage as exactly for team japan had the last half and have the draft all the way down here look at the run here, massive run for Team France but a, a second penalty there for track limits, Baptiste Beauvoir giving away a second to Japan and Suzaki, will he try and go around the outside still sends it regardless, look at Team Canada on the inside, they're going to make the best of this, but that's allowed Canada to now close right up to the back of these two This is going to be hugely exciting to see what Ethan Lim who's behind the wheel of the Canadian run X2019 is going to be able to do, Japan and Suzuki go defensive there, but here comes Ethan Lim down the inside for third place in towards the final sector, Great Great move from the Canadian driver. His next target is going to be Saya Suzuki. He's going on the outside of the Japanese driver through the final series of corners. Switches into the inside, the soft tyre with way more grip underneath him. And it's left Japan right in the clutches of Team France here as they come down the back straight. France pulling out of the slipstream there. Can they roll not to move? Down in towards turn one. Canada into second. Japan do hold into third for the time being. Yeah, Baptiste spoke why his exit was somewhat compromised there, so he couldn't quite make the best of that. Uh, that move on Japan. So let's just have that one second penalty coming up, which will be uh, a real pain for them. In the background team, Italy managing to come back into contention here on that hard compound attire. Bussinelli at the wheel at the moment. They've still got, uh, I think, Gallo to come yet yeah, at the moment. So uh, a very quick driver waiting in the ring, the anchor, so to speak. And here is the view on board here for Marco Bussinelli. And that is a gap. That's Team France in front, Team Japan as well. Already, look, Canada, they're gone. That soft tyre, absolutely rapid. You can barely see him anymore. Yeah, they've cleared off into the distance. This is going to be quits in here for Team Italy, as it stands, because they could be set to profit very nicely and elevate themselves up into fourth position. The wheels, well and truly, coming off of Francis Wagon. There is the penalty being served here for Baptiste Beauvoir. Personnelli says, thanks very much, and goes straight through in towards fourth place. Now France with a lot more work to do than they were anticipating in the middle stages here of this one. We're just going up to half distance. Yeah, no idea there for Beauvoir. He was handed a car there at the lead of that sort of hard compound runner pack and is now already at the back of it. So uh, if, if he hangs on, it's OK. But of course, a little bit of time loss. He'll be frustrated with that. But uh, hopefully he can keep himself calm. He's, he's, he's a passionate man, is Baptiste. And these mistakes do get to him. So hopefully he can put that to the back of his head and just get on with the job at hand. There's still very much a big chance here for Team France in the grand final. Half race distance completed. And uh, I've got a feeling something's going to get more exciting from here, Tom. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen here for, uh, for Team France France and what's going to be like when they stick Killian Drummond in that car uh, for the end of this race because if there's a man that uh, could outperform uh, a lot of other drivers in this field it is Killian Drummond just look at his track record in the GT World Series the showdown last year when we had it in Austria he managed to uh, get the win in the Nations Cup and also in the Manufacturer Series as well he was right up there on the gearbox of Busnelli through the first couple of corners was Baptiste Beauvoir but wasn't quite able to launch an attack on the Italian as they head through in towards the middle sector
So getting a bit closer now is Baptiste. Bit of wiggle for uh, Team Italy. And from that hard combat of time, really doesn't have much grip at this stage of the race. A reminder, of course, of our Michelin time trial. Compete in that, and the winner will receive a VIP invitation to the World Finals in Barcelona. So if you fancy a, a nice uh, trip to Barcelona, get involved in that, and we might see you there. Yeah, looking forward to that, especially, but looking forward to seeing what is going to happen in this battle. Because look at Brazil, now a bit of opportunity knocking here. Who's on the wheel of that? Igor Fraga. He's a man who's got a fair bit of experience, Nations Cup champion back in 2018, been racing in Super Formula Light, and now there's three drivers and three teams running nose to tail. So France's fortunes continue to fall in the favour of others as Italy then going on the defence. But here comes Igor Fraga trying to launch an attack. He closes up onto the back of them at the moment, but no room for him to make a move as it stands through into the final couple of corners but this is the thing for France now they're stuck in a bit of a sandwich trying to attack but also keeping a watching brief on the fast Fraga behind Fraga needs to get by these guys quickly but uh, Baptiste Beauvoir is going to try and put a car in between them up the inside goes Baptiste Beauvoir for Team France makes a move up to P4 but now oh, a little bit wide there and so on exit and he loses both positions there down to P6 just about nabs it back again there from Team Brazil Fraga though now all over the back of the Frenchman almost running into the back there and Beauvoir just not quite able to make the move stick and now look how slow he's out of there easy pickings here for our ex-Nations Cup champion Igor Fraga up into P5 and now he'll go into hot pursuit of Bucinelli and Team Italy but you have to think it's going to be an easy job for him yeah well of course he's on the medium cup out of tyre is Igor Fraga compared to the hards of uh Baptiste Beauvoir and also Marco Busnelli. So this could be, as you say, easy pickings for Fraga. He knows how to put the pressure on to drivers and he's a very smart, sensible, relatively level-headed young man. And I'm keen to see how he is going to launch an attack onto the back of Team Italy. The gap between Italy, actually, and Japan is now just over 2.3 seconds. So it's going to be a fairly arduous task for Fraga to try and close out down that gap, but certainly not impossible with just over 13 laps now remaining. Through into the left, then the right, you can see Bustelli trying to park that car as best he can to thwart the charge of Fraga, but Fraga sends it down the inside and through into fourth position. So now the Brazilian is trying to get himself and Team Brazil onto the podium here. Yeah, really nice move. That really decisive did not give Bustelli any chance to retaliate. Move was done before he knew it, and uh, Igor Fraga can now go in chase of Team Japan up into P3. So this is an important part of the race for Team Brazil. They need to be quick here. They need to be fast. Uh, and France picking up another penalty, another track limits penalty. Both while really having a, a difficult time keeping this car between the white lines. Yeah, it has been a challenging weekend for him so far, not only here in the Nations Cup, but in the Manufacturers Cup last night. Here's the lap time difference between uh, Team Japan and Brazil. Brazil, certainly the quicker of the two, you'd expect that, because, of course, they're on the medium tyres, whereas Japan are on the hard. Now, just looking at the gap out in front, Spain have got 23.6 uh, 23 seconds over Canada in second position, but you don't really need to worry about that, because Canada are a little bit out of sequence owing to the fact that they're on the softer compound of tyre. It's Japan that you need to really be keeping an eye on as it stands for the time being. They're some nine seconds further down the road. It's working quite nicely here for, for Team Spain, but the thing is, of course, they are going to be on the hard tyre, the slower compound, for their last stint. They are, yes, so uh, penalty there for both are in the background, but look at this. Brazil already closing up to the back of Team Japan. Igor Fraga really making the most of that medium compound. They're dipping a wheel into the gravel on that so not the fastest way through the corner there in mind of our tyre strategies there in the bottom left-hand corner but this is where that medium tyre is going to do its best work through this twisty section where mechanical grip is more important and you can see the gap coming down visually corner by corner I wouldn't be surprised if we see a move maybe into T1 so Igor Fraga now locking onto the back of the Japanese car in front round the last corner not quite close enough to make the move into T1 but look how much faster he's through, through there so much more confidence in the tyre and watch him in this braking zone Bam! On the brakes. Look at the gap come down. Just like that, he can almost reach out and touch the car in front now. Yeah, this is really good driving from Igor Fraga. He knows how to handle these X2019 machines, and he is driving absolutely superbly as it stands, as well as actually Sasaki as well. He's doing a really good job of just soaking up that pressure and not sort of defending fresh air, putting the car in a position where it could leave him vulnerable on the exit of a corner, just driving the sort of normal line that he needs to. The thing is, though, it's going to be coming down in towards these corners where he's going to be vulnerable for attack, and that's exactly what happens. 
Igor Fraga is through and into third place at the start of lap 18. He loves that move, doesn't he? Waits to the last second. Jinga steering wheel up the inside, easy. So Brazil now up into P3. Now, this is where the race is going to start getting interesting because a lot of uh, teams are yet to use the soft compound on time. In fact, the only team to use it so far, Canada and Spain. So when we get into this last series of pit stops, we're going to see all the cars who haven't used that compound yet start to have, they're going to have a rocket of a last in compared to the guys up front. So the question is, have Spain, have Brazil, have Canada done enough to keep away, as you can see there, the Japanese driver getting warmed up for the last stint there. I, I think the last stint, is, is it driving or? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> ready for? Bit of aerobics taking or place down on the like stage. <laughs> 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 well, I'm keen to see what they are going to be able to do. Uh, Sasaki in the car at the moment. It will be uh, Rikuta Kobayashi who will take over from uh, uh, from Takuma Sasaki and uh, mm. let's see what happens as Italy and France then into the pit lane and also Japan there as well so driver change as Kobayashi will get himself into the car for the last stint in their race and crucially onto the soft compound of tyres likewise Italy and to an extent France as well but of course a challenging middle stint there for Baptiste Beauvoir has rather put them on the back foot a little bit here with just over 10 laps now remaining meanwhile out in front Spain still continue to lead by some 23.8 seconds over Canada so Kobayashi coming out there right behind team two they did not want that they wanted to be ahead of his car but uh, Kobayashi a real life racing driver he will take no prisoners uh, only 18 years old qualified for his first uh, round of GT events this year and we've been waiting for him to be old enough to be here look at him already up to the inside or on the back of team Chile. he will not wait up the inside he goes there up into P6 and now we'll try and hunt down Belgium and team Netherlands but uh, this is the last in for team Japan and they've got a long way to go but if anyone's going to close that gap it's going to be Kobayashi yeah, it's important for Kobayashi to get that move done. Really decisive from the Japanese driver. And these few laps that he's got now with a five-second deficit to Belgium are going to be absolutely crucial. He needs to really make hay whilst the sunshine's push like he never has done before to give Japan the best opportunity possible to challenge Spain as they get ready for their final pit stop. And crucially, of course, the hard compound of tyre here. As we look at Italy and France battling, they're now in their final stint. They're on the soft compound of tyres. This is an all-out battle with equal grip underneath him, it's Killian Drummond versus Valerio oh. Gallo. Tried to cut back there at the last second, a bit of contact between them, I don't think anything was intentional or malicious there, just a little bit of miscommunication on circuit, but bear in mind Gallo and Drummond, both incredibly fast drivers, so we'll see how this one pans out, Team Brazil and Team Netherlands making their last pit stop, Team Belgium as well coming into the pit lane, fitting that soft compound attire, Adriano Carazza gets in the car for Igor Fraga, now where will he come out relative to the cars around him, he is on that soft compound attire, is he ahead of Team Japan or not? It's very close, only a couple of times. Team Japan do manage to jump. Team Brazil there, so Japan uh, inherit the kind of overall lead if you take Spain and Canada out of the equation. But it's a long, long, big gap between the first couple of cars and where we are now. France and Italy under investigation for a collision. Then that'll be what we saw last time around. Let's see whether there's any further action from that. But it's Japan then versus Brazil as we come in towards the closing stages. Indeed, no further action there between France and Italy. Nothing malicious there, just a simple racing incident deems the stewards so Japan there third position for them but hunting them down is Adriano Carazza the Brazilian driver you give him an inch and he'll take a mile he would love to be able to get Brazil into the podium positions here so let's have a look and see how this is going to work out because it's going to be mightily close actually at the sharp end of the field Canada are one of that nine seconds up the road they're on the soft compound of Australia and they owe the hard compound and likewise Spain they're on the mediums and they owe the hard at the end of this one so I think it's going to be a lot closer than than uh, I was expecting towards the last few laps here because, of course, there's going to be a massive difference in lap times too. Yeah, Carrazza are really bringing the neck of this thing right now. A bit too much. They're actually a bit wide on that right hand. They had to get off the front or lost a bit of time to the Japanese driver in front. But actually, you have to say, Carrazza are looking like the quicker driver at the moment, although really wringing the neck and maybe forcing those front tyres a little bit too much at this stage. Those soft tyres do have to last to the end of the race. And we do have a time score tyre multiplier on. So uh, it's a very easy way to wear these tyres out. And again, wide for Karatsa there, so pushing too hard is Karatsa, so he's gone from being right on the rear wing to Japan to now uh, being in the sights of Team Italy and Team France, Gallo and Drummond respectively uh, for Italy and France, both very very quick drivers and if they smell blood in the water they're going to go for the move instantly, you haven't got to ask them twice.
So then, no cell running we have here between Brazil, Italy and France. All three teams on the soft compound of tyre. In the cars, you've got Adriano Carazza, Valerio Gallo and Kylian Dumont. Three very fast drivers. Carazza has been a little bit inconsistent on the opening couple of laps of his stint. You can see there, if you watch this race directly in GT7, you can redeem a free engine swap ticket and get a hold of the new Toyota Ambulance yeah. High Medic machine. Now we're talking. Why isn't the race using the High Medic? That's what I want to <laughs> Next time, maybe. <laughs> we'll get it, don't worry. But uh, the uh, battles continue here on circuit. It's Brazil, Italy and France. Uh, uh, so it's such incredibly quick drivers here. It's insane to me this is the battle for fourth, fifth and sixth. Yeah, I think you're right. I just want to say Canada are looking like they're probably going to pit at the end of this lap, by the way. They've got 16% on the rear tyres. As are Spain, I think, Tom, given that they have to pit now to have that mandatory eight laps yeah, on the right. hard compound of tyres. So we are going to see the last pit stops now, and we're going to know the true gaps between the leader and the people trying their best to chase them down. So really now the race starting to come alive here at Amsterdam, the grand final of the Nations Cup. Meanwhile, uh, Italy looking towards the back of Team Brazil, who go defensive. Carazza there getting his elbows out once more. We know he likes to do that, just sitting on the apex there, giving Gallo nowhere to go, and Drummond closes right up now. Drummond's got the best seat in the house here. He can watch Italy and Brazil fight between them and spy any chances he needs to try and get by. So on board with Drummond. Italy slow on the exit there. Drummond's going to go to the inside. Will he try and catch the draft? The defence there from Team Italy. Brazil still at the inside, defending from Italy and staying ahead for now, it seems. So going up the hill, Brazil there. Spain finally come into the pit box. So Spain coming for that hard compound of tyre. What is the gap going to be when they emerge? Team Canada needs to come in as well to keep an eye out for that. But this, which, and the car in front, Team Japan, are the chasing cars right now. A big round of applause there for Team Spain. It's been a great race for them so far. Can they hang on for eight more laps? And a hugely impressive strategy actually also for Canada in second place with Ethan Lim. Jose Serrano then exits pit lane. Canada come in. So Serrano then is the driver who is going to take Spain to the charge for the chequered flag but where are the rest of the field going to be in relation to him once these stops have all played out Japan uh, what's that 28 seconds down the road as it stands for now Canada also into the pit lane where are Prusy they going to emerge in relation to the rest of the field could they be on for a bit of a uh, charge for the podium here. They exit pit lane in second position, but of course they're on the hard compound of tyre. Crucially, what's the gap between them? First, eight seconds, so that's not really that much, given the fact that they're about two seconds a lap faster. Side by side here between France and Italy, down the start finish straight. Italy going a little bit wide there, going to leave them under attack here from France. Drumont's on the outside, Gallo is on the inside, two by two they come on the exit. France with the inside line, in towards the next corner. Did they manage to get the place up the inside? They do! So France now back into the top five again. They are, but Spain have absolutely knocked us out of the park. When you take Canada out of the equation, they are nearly 30 seconds ahead of Team Japan. I don't see that. that, that that's four or five seconds left. I don't see that coming down, Tom. Well, let's wait and see what happens. This is going to be hugely interesting here. I think Spain have pulled an absolute blinder as it stands for now. Their strategy has been absolutely perfect. They started this one in second place, got into the uh, race lead, and they have pulled an absolute worldie here with perfect driving from uh, all three of their lineup, Paul Jura, Coque Lopez, and now Jose Serrano. And I think that they are surely going to be very much in command of this one. I can't see that deficit going down to the wide, just given the race duration that's left. I mean, we do say that, but Kobe actually has taken chunks and chunks out of Team Canada already. Here is the battle between France and Italy at the start of a lap, so Italy go to the inside to defend, but run it a bit wide. Uh, Kylian Drummond goes round the outside, tries to keep it there, but of course the corner goes right, and uh, uh, Gallo is able to keep the car on the outside. Then it goes to the left, Drummond then has the inside, and they're side by side all the way around, and eventually Italy and Gallo have to yield to France, who have now gone up into P5. But all this battling has just slowed them all down. All they've been doing is squabbling uh, for this place. They need to be working together and trying to catch up Team Japan and the car in front. Speaking of Team Japan, the gap now between them and Team Canada, only 1.5 seconds. Last time I looked, it was about six seconds. Yeah, it's been a valiant sim for them in this race for Team Canada. They got themselves up into a position that I'm sure they weren't expecting given they were eighth on the grid, but they're going to be rather caught with their pants down a little bit in the last sort of five laps now remaining of this race because they've got a plethora of soft shod runners behind all of got good tyre life, good pace and a good amount of time to try and attack. 
So Japan there, past Canada, easy pass, you that coming. Japan now go after Jose Serrano. The reason why I wanted to stop you there, Tom, is because on the last lap, Kobayashi was four seconds faster than Jose penalty. Serrano. Penalty for Team Japan, oh no, that's going to really slow them down. So let's see what that penalty is for. It must be for track limits. We didn't see exactly what happened here. Brazil then under attack from Team France. Canada trying to keep themselves involved in the action. Italy trying to keep themselves involved in the action. Side by side they go. They almost to exit the corner in the same positions that they entered but this is hugely close and it's causing them a fair amount of time confirmed triple limits penalty for Japan by the way as France looks to the outside now then of them oh, and Italy dear. going through on the inside bit of hip and shoulder contact between them they've already picked up a warning for colliding with another car but it's getting a bit scrappy here it's costing them time might be costing them an opportunity for their podium places yeah this this is not being clever driving from these guys they've just been battling for a place so ultimately it's not what they're after they're here to win and they're all fighting for like third or fourth position overall so I'm not quite sure what the mentality is but it's easy to get caught up there these guys they're all convinced they're the fastest driver in the world no one wants to follow anybody else so and you sort of get into situation there as Karats are getting sideways and allowing Drummond and France to catch up there's Team Canada in front who's acting like a cork in the bottle so now what's going to happen here Canada struggling on that hard compound attire Brazil go to the inside to get by so Brazil are going to go up to third place there you go Brazil there Team Brazil onto the podium France through as well into P4 and Team Canada there languishing there. There's nothing they can do in this compound attire apart from just try and keep it on the road. But now they're holding Italy back. This is ideal for France and ideal for Brazil. Yeah, just giving them a little bit of breathing room then here. Adriano Carazza just trying to regroup and refocus following a scrappy first stint. Look at this side by side with Italy. They're going to go clean around the outside of Canada as such as the advantage of grip they have. Canada not taking this one though, lying down. Mark Pinnell still trying to defend that position, but I don't think he's going to be able to do so. And indeed, the Italians now up through in to fifth with just under five laps now remaining as it stands. Team Spain still out in front, by the way, 24.2 seconds is the advantage here. Yeah, it's, it's getting uh, the, the gap now. It is coming down, but not quick enough. You have to say uh, the uh, the work was really done in the first couple of stints for Team Spain. You really want to try and be on your own tyre compound so you can have your own race and uh, not have to deal with everyone around you. That's what they did. They were the only team to take the soft compound of tyre at the start of the race, shot off into the distance and didn't have to deal with uh, defending or attacking for position. So here are your uh, positions as we go on to lap 26. It's Team Spain leading by a massive 23 seconds from Team Japan. Then we have this battle. Brazil in P3 at the moment from France in P4 and Italy in P5. Uh, I've got no idea who's going to come out between those three, but they've been scrap uh, scrapping for pretty much the entire race. Yeah, look at the difference in the lap times there. It's sort of started to tail off a little bit for Japan, not in terms of the fact that they are fast. Of course they are, but you can see four seconds seconds, three seconds, down to two seconds. Those soft tyres are wearing out that little bit more quickly here for Rakuto Kobayashi as he sits in second place. The gap now down to 22 seconds, but what's that, three and a half laps now remaining, unless there is a mistake from Spain, and they have been so untouchable under pressure throughout this race, I can't see it happening personally. Yeah, Jose Serrano is currently uh, behind the wheel of that uh, Spanish machine at the moment, of course. He's the one that took it home yesterday for Porsche in the Manufacturers' Cup. Meanwhile, Netherlands onto the back of Canada, up into P6, going Team Netherlands then up into the top six. Great move, nice easy move there from Team Netherlands. Team Canada not fighting it too much in this state. They kind of know how much they can do at this point. And uh, De Bruyne there, the, the guy to take this car home. But can they get onto the back of Team Italy? The thing is, if, if the guys in front keep scrapping, again, they could be in contention for a podium here. Exactly. The thing is, just while we say that for Canada, they had to try something different really, didn't they, in the strategy. They were so mired down the pack, starting eighth on the grid, went to the soft tyres in the middle stint. That left them so much faster than everybody else. They were always going to be on the back foot. But of course, you can't predict how these races are going to develop in terms of incidents that happen out on track so if they've been on the soft tyres if they've been an instant if they've been a comfortable cushion for them and they're on the hard combat of tyres they'd have been in a similar position to Spain for example and they'd have had that cushion as it happens it hasn't happened exactly like that it's been a very very clean and fair race and that's why they're dropping down the order they're the only team other than Spain on the hard combat of tyre and unfortunately for them it is proving to be a slow dissension down the timing screens so here is the fight then for the last podium position Brazil currently ahead of France Kylian Drummond at the wheel, extremely fast driver is Kylian Drummond, considered one of the fastest Grand Turismo drivers in the world. Then again, so is Adriano Carazza, the driver in front of him, and so is the driver behind him, Valerio Gallo. Absolutely stacked field here today. And what can Drummond do? He's just about in the sixth room. You can see him following the car in front, just trying 
pick up the draft. And Karatsa, he's wary of that, which is why he's uh, moving uh, down the straight, trying to break the toe, trying to break that advantage of the slipstream. But here, you can see the tire life. Team France really is struggling. And as I say that, the rear tires of Team France going away and into the wall they go. An uncharacteristic mistake there from Kylian Drummond. He's going to be absolutely kicking himself. There's Team Netherlands up into P5. The Team Netherlands there taking advantage of the demise of Team France. But uh, we don't expect that from Drummond. Kylian finally cracks under pressure and he's been insurmountable so far in his GT World Series career. And it came at a very critical moment and it's allowed Kai de Bruyne a fifth place opportunity here in this one because he's on the soft compound of tyre. He's got enough time in hand to hold it over Team France. Already that gap up to some three seconds now here. So could we see the Netherlands getting a top five finish on home soil for the GT World Series event here in Amsterdam? And currently, Team Netherlands is actually the fastest car of the top five. So I don't think the work is over here for these guys. Still a couple laps remaining, still chances to be had. But with this pace, who knows? You might even see the Netherlands, as you say, approach a possible podium. Here's Team Radio for France. Uh, He's just saying sorry there, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah, so he's just saying, no, I'm really sorry for that mistake. But oh, yeah, yeah. it's unfortunate. It's, it's yeah, one of those things. And uh, that is the, the luck of racing and sometimes how it all falls out. But unfortunately for France, it's cost them a potential top five finish, maybe even a challenge on Italy for fourth place. So it's begun to spread out a little bit here in this field. And Kai de Bruyne has driven absolutely superbly, as indeed have the whole of the Netherlands team. They started this race in fifth place, despite being under a fair bit of pressure in the opening stages. They managed to get themselves back up into fifth right when it mattered, with just a handful of laps now remaining in this one. Last year, Kylian Drummond uh, did the double at Salzburg, Manufacturers and Nations Cup. Here, this man, Jose Serrano, might be able to do the same thing. Won the Manufacturers Cup yesterday with Porsche, currently in the league with Team Spain on the penultimate lap. Can he do the double here at Amsterdam? 18 seconds is the gap between them. You have to think, unless there's some sort of big mistake, Tom, it's looking pretty good for Team Spain, but we just saw a mistake. Anything can happen here. Yeah, certainly can. There's plenty of opportunity for things to go wrong, and uh, it only takes one of those small errors, just crossing the white line a bit too much and going on to the grass, perhaps, or maybe just snatching a break or locking the rears. We've seen that here tonight as well. If you think back to uh, Rakuta Kobayashi, when we had the qualifier race earlier on here this evening. There's plenty of opportunity for mistakes to come in. And this, of course, is the sort of prime opportunity for that as well. Drivers are getting tired. It's getting towards the end of the evening. They've been practicing. They've been rehearsing for this all day, thinking about their strategies. The brain is going to be tired. That's when you start getting fatigued, and that's when those mistakes get to creep in. You can just see there as well, the Michelin drive of the day will be announced during the press conference, which will take place directly after the conclusion of our broadcast here today. So we hope that you will stay with us for that and we will announce who of course has won that mantle here this afternoon so we're getting now on to the last lap of the race team spain currently coming round to start the final lap there is jose serrano he's uh of course, he's not watching that car right now, watching Team Belgium as they're getting onto the back of France. I think maybe Kylian Drummond, after that spin, has burnt some of that tyre away and now getting a little bit flustered as they come onto the back. And there goes Team Belgium. Look at the tyres there, 14% oh, on the wow. rear. They're going to be about as useful as a... Uh, well, I, I can't think of an analogy, actually. Like, it doesn't really matter. Either way, they're not going to have a lot of grip underneath him for Kylian Drummond in the last few stages of this one. And he's going to really leave himself under threat from Quinten Hall here. Yeah, meanwhile, uh, Team Spain on the final lap of the race. Only one more lap of the Lago Maggiore circuit separates them from glory here at Amsterdam. We're still on board with Team Belgium right now as they close, close, close on Team France in front. Look at the difference in the braking zone there. Team France is wounded and Quinton Yahol for Belgium knows it. Right onto the rear spoiler now goes Quinton Yahol. Can he get this done? Can he get Belgium into the top six here at Amsterdam? Well, it's certainly looking pretty likely here because Quinton's got more tyre life underneath him and unfortunately for Killian Drummond I think he might have to wave the white flag as it stands and just sort of defeat uh, or concede defeat rather for sixth place let's see how it all plays out as they go through this hairpin bend there is Jose Serrano meanwhile up the road by a considerable margin and what a race this has proven to be for the Spanish team
Yeah, Spain now coming around the last couple of corners. There's not much separating them and glory here at Amsterdam, Tom. Absolutely amazing stuff from Paul Jura, from Koke Lopez. They have not put a foot wrong all evening. They come through in towards the final corner. It was Jose Serrano who won in the Manufacturers' Cup today. And as part of Team Spain in the Nations' Cup, Spain wins here for the World Series showdown in Amsterdam. What a performance by 16 seconds over Team Brazil. It's going to be Rakuto Kobayashi who comes around the final turn to take second place for Team Japan here as well. A great drive from them. And then across the line in third position, a blinding recovery for Team Brazil. Seventh on the grid to third place at the chequered flag ahead of Italy and the Netherlands in the top five in Amsterdam as well for their home event. What a race, what a weekend, what a result for Team Spain. Yeah, and Belgium in the end did get France, so France having an awful last lap. There they come, Magda wonder what could have been there, but an awesome result for Jose Serrano doing the double here in Amsterdam. An awesome achievement there for Team Spain, and well deserved, not even by a little bit. Total domination for the Spanish here. They're really putting down the gauntlet for the world final in Barcelona later this year. I'm oh, glad, glad to see they managed to get the Spanish Spanish flag. The uh, commentators Alberto and Lucas were waving that frantically over the last few corners. It's been handed down to them uh, here as well, and they're now celebrating down on the stage. Jose Serrano there on the left. In the middle is Paul Jura, 18 years old, making his debut in the GT World Series. And then on the right was Koke Lopez. You can vote, though, for your Michelin driver of the day. Is it the Dutch driver, Kai de Bruyne, on home soil? The Netherlands getting a top five finish. Jose Serrano with second play, uh, sorry, with the win, rather, I should say, doing the double here in both the Manufacturers and the Nations Cup. And then Kylian Drumont for Team France as well. Maybe he could be your pick, despite, of course, that difficult last stint for the French team. Yeah, awesome racing that. Well, what, what an amazing uh, grand final we're here at Amsterdam, of course. I think Kai de Bruyne, bit of a fan favourite here, of course. Did really well representing Team Netherlands, but it's hard to look by Jose Serrano. He has just been untouchable all weekend. Here are some highlights from the race, of course. It was Spain who started in the soft compound attire and were fast earlier on, getting by France, and that proved crucial. That gave them the gap to try and build for later on. Here was Team Japan and Team Italy. They were fighting for quite some time, but Team Japan really being very forced there. Suzuki at the ball at that point getting by and putting the car up into third position. Yeah, it has been. It was an incredible race, wasn't it? Especially as it developed in the opening few laps here as Team New Zealand and the contact that they had with the Netherlands. It ultimately cost New Zealand a bit of a penalty and rather ruined their race. This was a move that they made a little bit later on uh, over at Team Canada through into fifth position. Nicely done there for the Kiwis. And a smile there for uh, Matt McEwen as well, who was behind the wheel of that car. This is when the pit stops took place. This was Team France with Baptiste Beauvoir. And rather, it was the middle stint for Baptiste Beauvoir that really cost the Frenchman very dear. Yeah, we had there uh, Beauvoir picking up a couple of... Um, different issues there on the track limits. Toko Lopez got in the car as well, very fast driver. Here was Team Japan, great move on Team France, massive dive up the inside. And uh, yeah, just about managed to get that move made on Beauvoir. Yeah, you can see Canada then here with uh, France up the inside they went. There's Japan as well, just in front of them. This is sort of the halfway stage of the race, so most teams have made one pit stop at this particular point, but France then picking up a penalty for track limits. It was a scrappy middle stint for them. They tried to retaliate as well on Team Italy, but they ran it a little bit hot. Italy went up the inside, and Brazil said, tough very much, and went through in sympathy there as well. Yeah, Team Brazil as well, of course. Igor Fraga with a mega uh, middle stint there, uh, putting the car into contention. Then it was that uh, Ryoto Kobayashi there to get into the car and try and bring it onto the podium. Past Team Chile, like they were standing still in the first part of the stint, out of the pits with determination, and then went into chase of Netherlands and Belgium. And then we had this moment of Kylian Drummond and Italy as well. A bit of contact between the two, uh, which uh, I think has sort of knocked Kylian out of its rhythm a little bit, because a few laps later, we see the mistake that would then define their race. Here was uh, Team... Uh, uh, Spain making their last swap. Jose Serrano getting in for them, and of course, Mark Pennell getting in for Team Canada. Yeah, absolutely. This was Canada then with uh, Brazil going through on the inside. Canada left themselves really vulnerable and open to attack in the closing stages of the race as the uh, drop down the order, of course, being on the hard combat of tyre. They had to try something different to get themselves up the order. Unfortunately, everybody else went for the soft tyre right at the very end of that one, and unfortunately left them over to attack <laughs> as Kai de Bruyne got himself up into fifth place, which gave the Netherlands something to smile about. This was where it all came undone, though, for Team France, a mistake 
uncharacteristically from Killian Drummond. Down the order they went, and you can see the disappointment there for the young Frenchman. But what do we say about Team Spain? Polyura, Coque Lopez, Jose Serrano taking a lights the flag victory in dominant fashion here for the World Series Showdown in Amsterdam. What an incredible performance. And here's what it meant for uh, Team Japan as well. Suzaki, well worth mentioning, of course, his second podium in two days as well, winning yesterday with Team Porsche and now on the podium, second with Team Japan. Here are the final results. Spain then, of course, your winners here in the grand final at Amsterdam. Japan, second place, 16 seconds behind in the end from Team Brazil on the podium. Italy in fourth, Team Netherlands in fifth and Belgium there rounding out the top six. But what could have been for Team France? A messy middle stint as well and a bad last, and I think, for Kylian Drummond, uncharacteristic. Really, uh, that really sums up their race. Yeah, ultimately 42 seconds off of the race lead. Well, anyway, let's go down to Julia, who's down with our race winning team of Coque Lopez, Polyura, and Jose Serrano. Hey, guys, how do you feel? How do you feel? So, so good. Yes. Is it done? Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're there. How do you feel? Like, that was pretty epic. I mean, this is your weekend. This is just Jose's world. We're all living in it. Venga, esto es tu fin de José, te marcate unas palabras en inglés, va. Obviously, you know, the, 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 the choice of the softs, like chef's kiss, I mean, did you know, did you feel it was the right strategy while it was happening, or was it still kind of up for debate? Because, I mean, it, you smashed it, you were so far ahead. Uh, after the qualifying race, uh, seeing that we finished second, we had it pretty clear that we had to start on soft, so we could uh, get all over all the battles, and it really worked out. Uh, we got a good pace, and we ended up winning. Yeah, yeah, you did. Menudo <laughs> inglés. Yeah. At what point did you know that you'd won? Because obviously, then it was at that, that you know, the, the, the final kind of pit stop, and then you were just, you saw how many, you know, it was like 20, 26 seconds. So at that point, you must have been like, I could just relax. I could just, you know. Sit back, lean back, yeah? Bueno, Josete, ¿en qué momento, ¿en qué momento creías que, que ya la carrera estaba ganada? Porque la distancia eran de 26 segundos en algún momento. ¿En qué momento? ¿Cómo, cómo has pensado, qué has pensado hacer ahí? ¿O cómo has decidido las estrategias de ese momento? Pues yo sabía que íbamos por buen camino porque Paul se ha hecho un steam increíble en el primer con el blando. Y luego Coque también un segundo steam espectacular con el medio y yo luego he ido más tranquilo con el duro, pero al final me he visto muy lento y digo, pues venga, voy a apretar un poquito porque me, estoy, me, me veo muy lento. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well, the, the, the race started really well with uh, Paul, with an amazing stint. Then Koke went uh, really, really fast with the, with the, with the mediums. And then uh, at the beginning of my stint on hearts, I, I felt really, really slow. But then I thought, okay, let's push, let's push. And, and that's what I did. And, and uh, it ended well, so... Yeah, it was kind of okay, it's fine. <laughs> so, uh, one final question, Koke. How was it for you this time doing an, a Nations Cup, but having, you know, people from your nation by your side doing it? How, how was it different? Is it better? Do you like it more? It's better, especially when they are even faster than me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to be a champion, but when we were training, I was just, yes, please. I was, I was thinking I go hard just because it's less laps, but yeah. then I was thinking I'm so bad on traction, so with the hearts I might spin or anything, please let me not use the heart. <laughs> and then suddenly Jose, the, which at first was supposed to use soft, then we found out that he was so, so fast with the heart. We did an amazing job. I think we've really prepared this to get a, a good result, and yeah, it's so, so nice to have them as a teammates. Yeah, I'm like we're loving the new format. What do you think, guys? It's pretty great, right? Full team, we love it. Well, look, huge, let's hear it for them. Our winners, huge congratulations, guys. It was a beautiful race. And back to you, Tom and Jimmy. Yeah, thank you very much indeed, Jules. What an incredible race that was. And, well, it's interesting to hear Coque Lopez there saying, <laughs> despite being the world champion, they're faster than I am. I've never heard a driver say, like, yeah, I'm slow. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think he's doing himself a bit of a disservice. Uh, uh, disservice there, yeah. Um, incredibly fast team. You know, you're only as quick as the weakest link in your team, and that team was 16 seconds faster than anybody else. I think that says it all, really. Yeah, it really was incredible, wasn't it? Shout out, though, to Japan. An amazing second place. They yeah. sort of weren't really in, uh, you know, many fights over the course of that one, but they kept it calm, kept it consistent, and brought home second. It was just that first stint from, um, from Spain that basically put everyone out of contention. You know, Japan, they said, were really quick, as were Brazil. 
Brazil, uh, as were Italy and France, uh, until, of course, the issues with uh, Drummond at the end of the, uh, end of the show there. But, uh, yeah, a really awesome final. I've got a reminder, of course, to you guys, you can vote for your Michelin driver of the day. The winner will be announced during the press conference a bit later. I want to make sure you stay around for that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Well, of course, there is uh, a few drivers that have already been nominated, as you can see there, Kaida Brun, Jose Serrano, Killian Drummond. Which of those three do you think would win your Driver of the Day award? I'm going to put it to you again, Jimmy Broadbent. We did this yesterday for the Manufacturers' Cup. Who would be winning your award? I'd say, you know what? I mean, Jose Serrano, he's won enough, all right? You can, you can put him out in the, uh, the corner for a little bit. I'd, I'll give it to, to, to Kaida Bruin, I think, because he's, he performed really well in front of a home audience. There's a lot of pressure uh, performing in front of a live crowd, like this, especially on home soil as well. And he delivered. He did really well. Not quite quick enough this uh, time for Team Netherlands for a podium, but, you know, you can see the pace is there in that team. And I think with a little bit more time together, they're going to figure that out and possibly put themselves up on the podium in the future. Yeah, it really did work well. And of course, the shake-up in the format, I mean, you know, winning the Jimmy Broadbent Driver of the Day Award, hey, I mean, that's pretty prestigious in itself, right? But... Yeah, really impressive performance, them, especially on home soil here in Amsterdam. You know, having had a crowd and it's always that extra bit of pressure that you've, you've got to deal with. And they really managed to, to, to deal with it very well. But how great is having a live audience back? Every time we have a move, massive roar from the crowd, massive round of applause to everyone as well. It's been, it's been great to have them here. And you can hear them in the background, they listen to them. These, these guys make the show. It's awesome to have them here. And uh, I'm so glad we get to have a, a crowd in person again. Yeah, absolutely right. Well, let's get ready then, shall we, for the podium ceremony for our top three nations here in Amsterdam. In third place, please welcome Adriana Carazza, Lucas Benelli, and Igor Frogger for Team Brazil. In second place, please welcome Rikuto Kobayashi, Takuma Sasaki, and Saya Suzuki for Team Japan! <laughs> and the winners of the Nations Cup in the World Series showdown here in Amsterdam, Jose Serrano, Coco Lopez, and Paul Jura for Team Spain! And now your respect, please, for the national anthem of our winning nation of Team Spain. A huge congratulations to Jose Serrano, to Coque Lopez, and to Paul Jura. The Team Spain win the Nations Cup here in Amsterdam. And now it is time for the trophies to be presented to our top three finishers. First of all, gaming manager for Michelin, Jeffrey Marseille, will present the third place trophy to Team Brazil. The drivers of which are Adriano Carazza, Lucas Benelli, and Igor Fraga. The second place trophy is going to be presented by Belman Nadarevich, the CMO of Fanatec. And it is, of course, presented to Team Japan, the drivers of which are Rikuto Kobayashi, Takuma Suzuki, and Saya Suzuki. Chief, congratulations to Team Spain. 
uh, to Team Japan rather, and now to the winner of the Nations Cup here, the trophy which is presented by the producer of the Gran Turismo series, Katanori Yamauchi, and is presented to Jose Serrano, Koke Lopez, and to Paul Yura of Team Spain. Incredible. I'm, it just, like I was saying to the guys down there, having them side by side really means that extra little bit more. Because it's just like, you know, I don't know, don't you think? <laughs> I agree. I mean, that's barely a sentence. But it, it, was, it was some words that were formulated in this sort of loose order, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You knew what I meant, but uh, yeah, yeah it's cute. I, I gotta say, I was a little bit maybe skeptical of, the, of this format, but I think it works really well. It's great to see it be about more than one driver. A true Nations Cup here as well. And of course, it means that the strongest nation are the ones that come away with it. Team Spain absolutely dominating today, and I think a well deserved winners. Yeah, amazing strategy right, right from the start. Super cool. Um, what an amazing Nations Cup, but. There's going to be, there's more to come because we've got our world finals in Barcelona, November the 30th to December the 2nd. We would love to see you guys there because honestly, totally different. I mean, it just, it's nice having people around Tom, like here <laughs> and like enjoying it. We're not just like by ourselves watching it. The way you right. phrase it made it sound like you were, it's nice to have people around Tom, as if I sit there isolated. You do, right? <laughs> I've, seen, I've seen your Twitch channel. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and of course, we've got the Toyota Gazoo Racing GT Cup, which is on November the 30th, and then Manufacturers Cup, and then Nations Cup uh, in the subsequent days as well. We want to see you there, so please go and like, get tickets. Come and join us at the world. If, like, if this is anything to go by, I'm not going to do the hot sauce analogy, but you know what? You know what I'm going you know to say? You know what I'm going to say? That was great. Come on, some final thoughts, chaps. Final thoughts, I mean, you definitely have to be there for Barcelona. Imagine if Spain went at Barcelona. Oh, like, imagine wait. the noise. Wait. <laughs> imagine oh the noise. <laughs> then we're going to lose some chairs. Out <laughs> <laughs> Take the roof off, won't it? I mean, yeah. it was just incredible, wasn't it? An, an amazing job from uh, Spain. I'm really looking forward to actually talking to them in the press conference a little bit later. Ooh, yeah, don't go anywhere because the press conference is still to come and we're going to be announcing our Michelin driver of the day. It's going to be a tough one. I think that was a tough one. Hot picks, those noms for um, Michelin than driver of the day there so yeah yeah definitely. well press conference is still to come so please don't go anywhere it's been brilliant fun to bring you an amazing weekend of racing we love you guys we will see you in barcelona it's goodbye to the crowd thank you for watching guys it's been super cool and we will see you next time Run of show.
muy buena. The new format of the Nations Cup is very special. Instead of being individually based, it's team based. Oh, this will be the first time to be a team format of individual competition. I really like because it makes you have to think more with your nations mates. C'est une bonne énergie d'avoir un esprit d'équipe, surtout pour une équipe nationale. Donc les équipes, c'est-à-dire d'avoir une sorte de, de fraternité entre eux et d'être bien soudés entre nous. Now you have to really work together as a team and have confidence in each other to have a good race. More important to have a balanced uh, gyro series, one super fast one. Spain has the strongest lineup because they have some very experienced drivers, one of them being the current world champion as well. Coco Lopez becomes the 2022 Nations Cup World Champion! It's a fun fact that even if I'm world champion of the 2022 Nations Cup, I'm the slowest one for, from the three Spanish guys. Team France is looking pretty strong for the Nations Cup. France has just a very very strong lineup. Some of the fastest in Gran Turismo, like full stop. Killian's just come off winning a Olympic gold medal, so it's not too many people can say that. Les plus rapides et les plus fortes, je pense que ça va être bah, la France évidemment, Italie. Je pense que le Japon soit très fort aussi. Japan has one of the strongest like teams. They have a lot of guys who are, you know, at the top of the leaderboard all the time. Muy buena.
Well, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening and welcome to the GT World Series showdown in Amsterdam. The Nations Cup event has taken place here this evening and it has seen Team Spain taking the victory from Team Japan and Team Brazil. We're going to be asking each of our drivers a question. We'll then be opening the questions up to some from the floor from our media and our audience here. And then we've got some social media questions to conclude as well. First of all, let's go to Team Spain, having taken the victory with their lineup of Jose Serrano, Coque Lopez and Paul Jura. Uh, Koke, let's go to you first of all. You are the reigning Nations Cup champion. How proud do you feel to be a part of now a three-driver lineup with Japan, with uh, with Spain having taken the victory here today? Uh, I've said it since the very first interview we had here at the beginning of the weekend. Uh, I think it's a a pleasure to drive with such good teammates like Jose and and Paul. They are very fast. Even on the very first, even from Paul, he was uh, showing an incredible pace. Uh, we just had to keep the car alive to the end because in his team he was making a big gap. And yeah, uh, nothing else to say. It's so um, different the format, but still I really enjoy this kind of races because I like a lot of strategy and it's a pleasure to be here with them. Perfect. Thank you very much indeed, Koke. Let's move over to Paul. Paul, you're 18 years old. This is your first event for the GT World Series and you've managed to win it as part of Team Spain. Just describe to us your feelings. Well, uh, first of all, I'd like to thank my teammates, Jose and Koki, and congratulate Team Brazil and Team Japan for the podium. And yeah, as you say, it is my first event, and I'm, I'm, I can't believe this, because I've never thought that this would happen, so I'm just uh, uh, quite uh, um, impressed. Paul, thank you very much. And let's finally move over to Jose Serrano. Jose, quite an incredible performance. You were on the top step in the Manufacturers' Cup yesterday. You're now on the top step in the Nations' Cup. You've done the double here in Amsterdam. How do you feel? Bueno, Jose, eh, has ganado tanto hoy como ayer eh, con Porsche. ¿Cómo, ¿Cómo te sientes con esta doble victoria? Pues la verdad que ahora mismo estoy en un sueño porque nunca me había imaginado esto. Nunca imaginaba ganar en un evento presencial, pero hacerlo dos veces en el mismo fin de semana es completamente increíble. Well, I feel in like in a dream, no? Uh, I I never expected to to win a, a World Series uh, tournament, but uh, to do it in a double time, no? Yesterday with the Manufacturers Cup and today with Nations Cup is uh, absolutely a dream. Well, congratulations, Jose. A round of applause here for Team Spain having taken the victory in Amsterdam. And now we move over to our second place team of Team Japan. Their driver lineup comprised of Rakuto Kobayashi, of Takuma Suzuki, uh, Sasaki rather, I should say, and Saya Suzuki. Uh, let's first of all talk to Takuma Sasaki. Takuma, uh, how do you feel having finished in uh, second place as part of Team Japan? Sasaki <laughs> I am very happy, uh, but at the same time, um, you know, I, I wish I could have done a little more. So. Okay, thank you very much indeed, Takuma. Let's move over to, uh, to Saya Suzuki. And uh, Saya, you were, of course, a, a crucial part of uh, Team Japan's second place finish. How are you feeling having uh, gotten onto to the podium for, for the Japanese team here with this new format, especially? はい、結構あの、あの、活躍されて、um, I'm very happy to be able to have uh, you know, um, uh, produced a very significant result in a big tournament like this. Well, thank you very much indeed there, uh, Saya. So let's move over finally to Rikuto Kobayashi. Uh, Rikuto, we understand that you were also uh, doing some racing in, in uh, real life in, in Japan. So how does it compare to, uh, to racing in, in Japan in, in a real race car to being here in, uh, in Gran Turismo and finishing on the podium with your Japanese teammates? あの、
あとはまあお金もかからないし好きなだけ練習もできるしそういった素晴らしい環境が、えー、ゲームにはあると思います。でその中で、えー、本当にあの実力だけで集まったこの日本の、えー、メンバーと共に戦えて、えー、この順位を取れたことっていうのは、えー、本当に良かったことですしあの、まあ、僕自身としてちょっと反省すべき点もあるのでそこはあのワールドファイナルに向けてもあのまた成長していきたいと思います。Yeah, so,、um, you know, I think the main difference、uh, you know, between,、uh, having, uh, between ha- participating in a real race、uh, in Japan is that、uh, you're really on equal conditions、uh, in the、uh, Gran Turismo World Series. So, it really is a test of your skill against the, te- the skills of the others.、Um, and, you know, it doesn't take any money to practice. You can practice as much, many times as you want、uh, in a game. Um, so, you know, again,、um, it is a test of your skill against others. And、um, to have been able to、uh, produce this result、uh, with my teammates from, from Japan who are also just as skilled、uh, is a great feeling.、Um, I do have some regrets、uh, of things that uh, you know, uh, I couldn't accomplish in the race.、Um, so I want to make sure that I grow、um, you know, by the time the,、uh, the world finals、uh, rolls around. Rikuto, thank you very much. A round of applause for Team Japan finishing in second place. In the Nations Cup. And finally, we move over to Team Brazil. The driver lineup being comprised of Adriano Carazza, Lucas Benelli, and Igor Fraga. Let's first of all talk to、uh, Adriano Carazza.、Uh, Adriano, just talk us through your thoughts on that race and、uh, managing to be a part of third place for Team Brazil here. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the、uh, race in the qualify. Is not so good to me. I'm involved、uh, in incidents. But、uh, we start in seventh position. I know、uh, Lucas is fast and、uh, hard, and、uh, so we tell him to start. And、uh, he d o a very, very well, great job. And we don't lose any time. So after Igor did an excellent stint, and last is my, my stint,、uh, I try to、uh, defend the podium a lot. And、uh, yes, it's. it's It's great. It's Adriano, great. thank you very much indeed.、Yeah. Let's move over to,、uh, to Lucas Benelli now, then, as well, and talk to your teammate. Lucas,、uh, just talk us through that race from your perspective and、uh, also being a part of Team Brazil's success here tonight. Estou muito feliz por a gente ter conquistado esse pódio. É, fizemos uma boa recuperação, é, ganhamos bastante po- posições, é, e o meu stint foi muito bom. É, saindo bem satisfeito, conseguimos colocar numa posição onde a gente teve disputa para o pódio, assim como o Igor fez também um stint perfeito de médio e o Adriano também, para estar concretizando o pódio no terceiro lugar para o Brasil. I'm very happy, we recovered many positions, I'm very happy with my stint, my colleagues did an amazing job, so good work and I'm happy for the result. Thank you very much indeed. And let's finally move over to、uh, Igor Fraga.、Uh, Igor, you've、uh, received a lot of praise from your、uh, teammates as part of your role as,、uh, with Team Brazil.、Um, how are you feeling having been、uh, so important as part of、uh, your role to get Brazil into third place, especially given where you guys were starting on the grid? Yeah,、um, I think uh, we. Uh Uh, me and teammates、uh, were able to work really well together.、Um, the, the, the starting also was、uh, really good because、uh, Bonelli was able to put some good pace on hards.、Uh, he didn't lose any time.、Uh, this made me possible to recover really well with the mediums.、Uh, I was able to overtake the cars, and then、uh, we were fighting for the podium at the end.、Uh, Adriano h o l d on to it、uh, very well. And、uh, yeah, it's, it's been good because you know,、uh, it has been more, more and more difficult to have fun to, to practice, but still、uh, putting Um, good pace here for me.、Uh, it's, you know, it feels good. Igor, thank you very much indeed. A round of applause for Team Brazil finishing in third place. Well, before I open it up to questions from the floor here this evening, we can now announce our Michelin Driver of the Day, and it is awarded for a second time in succession to Jose Serrano. Many congratulations, Jose. Very well deserved after doing the double in both the Manufacturers' Cup and indeed here in the Nations' Cup. Before we go to some social media questions, I'd like to open it up to questions from the floor from our international media and the audience here.
Hello, uh, Tom from Traction here. I've got a question for Jose Serrano, if that's okay. Um, two wins, two days. Is this one of the best weekends of your Gran Turismo career? Bueno, do, hola. Dos días, eh, dos victorias. Eh, ¿Qué es lo mejor? ¿Qué es lo que mejor sacas de, de estas dos victorias? ¿Qué es lo que mejor te que, con lo que te quedas? Pues sobre todo de todo lo que he aprendido esto, este tiempo, que no, no he podido ganar en un evento presencial. Y ahora hacerlo dos veces, pues dice todo el trabajo que todo, todo el duro trabajo que, que he realizado y la verdad que muy contento ahora. Well, yeah, this means uh, all the effort, all the, the hard work uh, during the many years to, to achieve this, uh, this goal. So, so that's what, what really makes me, you know, uh, uh, that's what I keep from, from this weekend, no? Uh, the, the, that's the, what I keep, you know, uh, all the effort made to, to, to make this happen. Okay, hello. Um, questions for uh, Igor Fraga, Team uh, Brazil. So, um, you know, you guys have a really strong team. What do you think it's going to take to really get to that next level for the uh, World Finals? Yeah, I think for the World Final, uh, we uh, have to practice a lot. Um, yeah, to, um, how can I say, um, put everything together, all the details, because, you know, uh, the qualifying was a little bit off. And then uh, also in the qualifying race, and you know, we had a couple of incidents, uh, you know, which, which made it a little bit difficult for the Grand Finals. For the Grand Finals, I think we had great paces. Uh, I don't know if was able to catch uh, Spain if we started fr in, in the front, but uh, we would have a lot more chances. So we have to, you know, put everything together, uh, stay consistent, you know, don't do any mistakes. So, well, yeah, we, we, we should get a shot on the world finals. Igor, thank you very much indeed. And now we'd like to ask some uh, questions from social media, unless there are any further ones from the floor. Yep. Okay, let's go over to some social media questions. Got a question for yourself again, Igor. Uh, how do these Red Bull X2019 cars compare to the, the Super Formula cars that you've been driving over in Japan? Yeah, so uh, the Super Formula cars are... Uh, they have um, a lot of downforce. I think uh, it's even more than, than those Red Bull cars. It's super fast around the corners and also have a little bit more traction, maybe less top speed. Uh, but yeah, the G-forces are, are crazy. So yeah, uh, it's, it's very fun cars to drive. And these ones, uh, because uh, you know, there's a lot of lack, lack of traction, uh, you got to be very gentle and careful with the throttle because otherwise you, know, you do mistakes and also you burn the tires. Uh, it's very, very tough. Igor, thank you very much. Uh, question now for Team Spain, and you can decide between you which uh, the drivers answers this. It's from Kirith on uh, social media, and he says, uh, why did Spain choose to start the race on the soft compound of tyre? Uh, well, I think also Jose, uh, Paul said before, but uh, the decision to start on soft was because in the practice, all of us felt very, very strong with our respective tyres. And we were kind of waiting to see what France were going to start with. Uh, and depending on, on what they were using, we would maybe do the same or different. And yeah, as soon as we saw they were using mediums, uh, we just told Paul to go and just try to overtake as soon as possible and make a gap because I know we all had a good pace and just make it like if it was a lobby training as we did in, in the previous weeks. And yeah, it worked. It was very nice also, I think, the the gap is not real because there were uh, people fighting and so. So I wouldn't say, of course I'm so happy, but I wouldn't say we are so favorites. So like we're gonna stay relaxed for, for Barcelona and try to not think we are the best so we can get a good result there also. Okay, thank you very much. A further question for uh, Team Spain. I'll ask this one to, uh, to Jose. Uh, Spain had an incredibly dominant race. How did you guys feel being in the lead? Were you comfortable or knowing that one mistake could really hurt you? That's from Anubis on Twitter. Say again, the last... <laughs> it, doesn't, it was from Anubis on Twitter. Oh, okay. oh, oh sorry. Uh, knowing about the, um, the, the lead of the race, uh, how did it feel for Jose being in that position, knowing that one mistake could be so costly? Bueno, José, que ¿cómo te has sentido eh, estando liderando la prueba ¿no? eh, después del relevo que ha hecho Coque y, y Paul? Eh, eh, realmente, ¿cómo, eh, desde el liderato, ¿cómo, cómo has manejado la, la presión? ¿no? Pues lo he manejado con mucha tranquilidad porque mis compañeros Paul y Coque han hecho su trabajo en, en los dos estilos, han hecho un trabajo increíble. 
Y ya en el, en el último mío era pues, un poco salvar un poco los muebles, ir tranquilito y, y nada. Tranquilo. Eso es todo. Yeah, well, uh, it, you know, the, the hard work was made by, by Paul and, and Koke in, in their stints and, and then my, my, my stint was just about to, to keep calm and to be steady, not make any mistake and, uh, yeah, he said a Spanish word, funny Spanish word, but, uh, yeah, just drive like, a, you know, really, really steady. That was my job. Uh, they made the hard work, so, so, yeah, that was the goal. Thank you very much indeed, Jose. That does then bring an end to the press conference and indeed the GT World Series showdown event here in Amsterdam. Once again, a huge congratulations to Team Brazil, to Team Japan and to our winners of Team Spain. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Don't forget, of course, about the GT World Series finals taking place on the 30th of November and the 1st and 2nd of December in Barcelona. Thank you very much indeed for joining us and we'll see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.